two, one, and there you have it. We are live with episode three of the dojo. My name is D Machine, and I am joined none other by choice. There was a there was a couple of people who were like, "Who is this person?" And that's exactly why I wanted to bring you choice. That's exactly why I wanted to bring you on the podcast because I wanted to give more people an opportunity to meet you and understand you and love you and your content the way that I do. So welcome to the dojo yeah. how you feeling dude yes welcome um i'm feeling feeling pretty good i was very excited to uh, to be here the the highlight of my week and it's been a busy week for me so that's uh, that's really saying wow. something i get the freaking yeah. week highlights let's go yeah. if you're unfamiliar choice makes world of warcraft i mean you just make dope like video game content i wouldn't even i wouldn't even pigeonhole p- pigeonhole your content into being uh, just for the World of Warcraft nerds, but it it does have a lot of World of Warcraft expertise hmm. sprinkled throughout. I, I, I mean, would it, say. It, it it is uh, objectively Warcraft stuff at the moment. That's uh, <laughs> it, it. It is what it is. But yes, uh, thank thank you for the uh, the kind words on that. Of course, of course. And in case you are new to the dojo, this is a PvP, a World of Warcraft PvP focused podcast, but uh, we tend to kind of diversify the topics up. Turns out I'm still really fucking stoked for Elden Ring, and that's really soon. I know it might not Mm. be an MMO, but uh, it's going to be a pretty dope game. And, you know, I still want to talk about some other games and other stuff throughout the industry. Uh, It's pretty crazy how... Uh, big the gaming industry is in terms of uh, money, but how small it is in terms of uh, just, I don't know, overall <laughs> communities. I feel like uh, you, you've heard it once uh, or you've heard it a million times. It's like, no, my community is more toxic than your community. No, my <laughs> community is more toxic than the other community. And you know what? Uh, the reality is, is just it's probably just like a generational thing. Hmm. <laughs> we're just like a, a, a internet social thing i mean we're talking about like crowd psychology but hmm. i digress this is a pvp yes. podcast and we talk about world of warcraft pvp and i, I want to start talking about the very first topic because i've been waiting to talk about it all freaking week because it's been something that uh has been near and dear to my heart and i'll explain why team liquid has entered world of warcraft esports not just in the race to world first uh, with uh, Limit, picking up Limit the Guild, but also picking up uh, OCK, a.k.a. Old Method Orange, a.k.a. Seedew's team. Yes. And I'm so fucking excited about that choice. I am so excited about Team Liquid entering the space. But the reason why is because I'm an OG StarCraft fan. How about you? Did you watch any StarCraft? Uh, no, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a hair too young to have gotten into like the peak of the, uh, the Starcraft scene. Um, I, I do have some friends who, who are really big into competitive Starcraft even, uh, today. Um, but I, I do know that, uh, the modern esports landscape does owe a lot to, uh, to Starcraft and to, and thus Liquid as a, uh, organization. Yeah. When, when it comes to esports in general, I just feel like, uh, volatility is kind of a, a valid criticism. Uh, mm. I mean, World of Warcraft in particular, uh, we get we get knocked with a whole lot of Blizzard makes a bajillion dollars. Why doesn't why doesn't the esport prize pools reflect that? Uh, mm. Or on the very polar opposite end of things, it's like holy shit, Overwatch League and Call of Duty League are gigantic. Is franchising really the answer? Are we losing a little bit of that like grassroot uh, flair? All valid criticisms uh, on the World of Warcraft side of thing is definitely um, uh, criticisms in regards to we feel like there's a lot of potential here, but financially uh, we feel like Blizzard isn't putting their money where their mouth is. Of course, I'm in a unique position where I kind of saw both sides. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you need the business model, right? But yeah, uh, that, that's it's one of those things where uh, when it comes to things like price pools, that there's a uh, it, they, they feel emotionally very pressing, but in a lot of cases, they aren't the issue that's the most solvable. Um, it's usually it's, the it's, con- very- it's a consequence of a lot of other things is what the yes, price ones yeah, being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blizzard could theoretically just cut a, a $2 million check for the AWC and be done with it. Um, but it, in practicality, there's obviously there's a lot of other factors that sort of play into that. And the biggest thing, to be 100% honest with you, uh, I'm going to bring this back to why this is relevant to Team Liquid soon, I promise. Yeah, yeah. But uh, prize pools in partic- particular or just like uh, money investment in particular has always been something I've been worried about just because as soon as you start growing too big, that's when people start descaling you quick. Yeah. Um, 
like, uh, and it's not even just Blizzard. I mean, there was like, I remember when Fortnite was first popping off with their hugest events, like when the when the esport was first popping off. Don't get me wrong, Fortnite's still gigantic, but like, it's nowhere near the like, just like social norm that they were like building back then. They, I mean, yeah. between like Ninja and Drake's co-op or whatever, I mean. Fortnite was on, you know, US's weekly talk shows. You know, they were on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite was popping off, and I and I and I really do think that that had a lot to do with a huge amount of money investment in the beginning. But it needs to be justified, and it needs to be sustainable long term. Yeah. And like that's where I don't think we can point the finger to many other games <laughs> that have yeah. like established a sustainable and long term business model that isn't just like completely reliant on the game selling copies and so uh, yeah. yeah so uh, sorry just i was curious so do you think that fortnite then was overvalued as a as a esports product at the time then or no i'm just trying to make sure i, I understood that point correctly sorry just, so just when, it, when, it, when it comes to well i mean it, it, there definitely wasn't future investments in the same level right as, as things right, went sure. on I mean, you, I, I'm not going to say that I'm an eSport expert or I'm a Fortnite expert by any means, yeah. but I will yeah. say this. Uh, I think that there was a lot of like social integration and a lot of like promotional aspects, but I do think that there was a lot of also competitive integrity issues um, sure, okay. yeah. uh, with the game. Like, for example, I remember back when everything was popping off, there was more conversations about the shotguns like spray spread than anything. Uh, mm. and, and I, and I think overall the game kind of led, uh, kind of like tilted its hat more towards being overall accessible, which I think it, it is a great thing, but that alone wasn't the notoriety it needed to continue to stay in the spotlight. Mm. Okay. Um, with, with that being said, I will also want to point out that a lot of these esports that were just getting their kickoff did get punched in the face by COVID. Um, yes, absolutely. That that does stop so much momentum. But to tie this all back into esports sustainability, I think uh, Liquid's got a good head on their shoulders, not just in regards yes. to yep. uh, you know business models and esports, but also in regards to how they run their own business. Like uh, they're one of the very few esports orgs that have competitors that have been around for, like fucking forever, like TLO mm -hmm. and shit. Um, and just knowing that they have that type of uh, loyalty to their staff. In their workers uh mm -hmm. as well as like they're they're very meticulous about how they think about uh how they move forward with a lot of things it, it's it's a good sign for the space that that liquid recognizes its potential yeah and think about the liquid acquisition that's interesting is that this is part of a coordinated drive into mmos as a genre and not just yeah. like like in sort of a random like oh liquid picked up uh the, the old otk crew because we I think we've seen a few instances of this before where like we've had uh, big names uh, come into the Warcraft space for like a year or two to like dip their toes into it and they sort of, you know, uh, decide it's not for them. Um, this seems like a, a more uh, structured, more thought through decision. So hopefully uh, Liquid are here for a number of years to come. Yeah. And, and you know, if they're not, that's a good indicator of what we need. We need to do something different, you know? Sure. Uh, I, I, when it comes to... Uh, the long term of World of Warcraft esports, I feel like we've had so many ups and downs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that like my my new mentality is just like whatever. If it's bad or good, it's it's at least information. Yeah. It's at least data day, moving forward. Yeah. Day by day. Day by day, brick by brick, as yeah. Will Smith says. But but yeah. yeah, that was huge. And also uh that team in particular, C Do, Trill, Mez, and Sam I am, they're grinders. Um yeah. they've been in the game fucking forever. I remember back when <laughs> C Do was on EG. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. And C Do's uh story uh about uh, finally qualifying and getting and winning BlizzCon course no uh, just it's gonna go down as like one of the all-time greatest esports stories in world of warcraft that, for sure absolutely I, I i completely agree with that they're uh they're a very likable team and as you said Sidu has uh has been around and and such a because he's he's like the first big wow esports streamer i think is that's fair to say he's been doing it for, uh, for, for a long sure. time now the his the, the time he puts in is very visible so like we've, we've got quite a lot of competitors who who don't stream as much. And so you don't really see them put in the the hours where Cedo, it's like, you know, you see him, you know, like they're, they're playing, uh, or well, they were playing um, Shadow Priest, Warrior, Mistweaver Monk uh, the other night. Like they've been like working on that as a composition and to see them like pulling that out into, in, into the current meta has been, 
been interesting to watch. Okay, I want to go back to that in yep. just a second. But before before I go back to that, uh, I also did want to shout out like Mez. I know that like Mez forever ago, he made like a big jump into streaming full time. Yep. Um, and you know it's had its ups and downs, but uh, I think an org like it, it's tough, right? I remember when uh, the move got picked up by the Gosu crew. And that felt a little weird because, like, hmm. I think that some of our esport teams and some of our uh, competitors are somewhat almost bigger than the orgs that enter the space. Yes. It, yes. <laughs> like, the move in particular felt like such a huge brand. And I don't know if the notoriety always matches, you know? And for Liquid, it did. And that's mm. awesome, yeah. you, you yeah. know. And that, I think that, that that was something that I've always been kind of worried about w w with with C team. Like as he builds more and more history in this game, uh, and you know the game might plateau in growth <laughs> in comparison to him. It, it's mm. almost like it's gotta it's gotta keep up. But I, I was yes. really happy sure. to see that. You know what it was too? It was me leaving. I was like seeing a team get picked up, and I'm not being, and I wasn't even the reason to why the team got picked up. That was pretty fucking awesome. But what the fuck is it with C Do and Miss Weaver Monks, man? Why does he think Miss Weaver Monks are good? Do you have do you have insight on this? Uh, I I do not have insight on this. I no. Because the thing is, I I don't want to say Miss Weavers are, are bad because Miss Weavers have somewhat of a victim complex. If we're, if we're being honest for a second, um, but they they are floating around above 3k on ladder like there are misweavers around so they're clearly not bad bad but uh, i haven't seen many um uh, in the time i've been playing the last few weeks so clearly they're they're in a weird spot on the ladder and i wouldn't be surprised if sidu thinks that with the upcoming patch they're going to uh be more be more playable i, yeah. I imagine that he that he's he's clued in something that we're not yep i think about, that's about that comp that sounds very very c -Doo. Uh One of the things I, I would say about c -Doo is that uh, he doesn't let other people get into his head when it comes to his hour uh, or his uh, um, theory crafting. Um, sure. Like on LAN, uh, especially if you don't have like a lot of that experience, you could talking to another team, you can let that other team completely sway all the data you just collected from a fucking scrim. Like you'd be like, yeah, yeah no, this comp definitely beats jungle. Like it's not, you'll, yeah. you'll go and talk to another team. If you don't have the own confidence in your own opinions, you can just get swayed on that. And that's when you see mm. like random confusing decisions in drafts on stage. Yeah. And you're yeah. just like, why did they do that? Because so, they get in their head. Sidu the refuses yeah. to let people get into his head. He's got, even if he's wrong, which I think is, I, I still think it's the right mentality. I still Fair think enough. it's the right mentality. Because, you, you, dude, it's, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard when you're on land. There's so many people fucking with your, with your psyche. Uh, dude, video game tournaments are weird. I guess just all competitions in general are weird. It is, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, it's, it's addicting as hell. Okay. Though, that, we, we hit that topic good. We, we, we touched on, on the Team Liquid topic. But uh, one thing that I, I, I tend to do or I want to do whenever we have a new podcast guest that has never been on the podcast before, third podcast episode in, it's going to be just yeah. about every <laughs> yes, guest, yep. uh, is I, I just want to do a quick little, uh, quick little interview, if you don't mind. Sure, I, absolutely. I, 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 there's so, I have so many World of Warcraft friends that I vibe with and shit like that, but I don't really know how they got into all this and how they got super invested in this weird nerd game like I did. So hmm. I just, dude, when did you start playing World of Warcraft? Uh, so I started playing uh, a few months into TBC. It was actually my, it was my dad who uh, got me into the game. So he, he started playing Warcraft himself um, right around the time I was like looking at doing stuff online. I was playing um, Empire Earth on uh, online. If you're, uh, if you remember that game, the, uh, the Age of Empires derivative, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, so my dad was the one who, who got me into WoW and he's regretted it ever since. It's, he, uh, he, uh, so he's quit. Uh, yeah, no. So, well, he, yeah, he, 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 occasionally he checks in, but, um, but yeah, for the most part, he, uh, he added somewhere uh, between Wrath and Kata sort of just faded out. Um, oh, wow. but yeah, it's, it's set up a, uh, a quite, quite a, a long term, uh, thing with, with me in uh, World of Warcraft. And yeah, I, I wonder what he would do differently if he had his time over again. I hope nothing. I hope nothing. I'm <laughs> glad to have you here, man. Yeah. You could tell, you could tell your dad that I'm, I'm grateful, but, yeah, that's pretty common. It seems like a lot mm. of people have like that that one person that kind of like encouraged them to get into it. 
Uh, mm. Which makes sense because WoW it is such a social game. I remember I get to like level 10 yeah. and I immediately am like, this would be easier with another person. Yes, I've, yeah. I've seen someone else in a party and I can't get a party. I need to play this game. I, I remember I would be so frustrated at playing World of Warcraft alone that I wouldn't play it until my friends got home from school or work or whatever. Mm. Um, so that's interesting. That's interesting. That's, yeah, that... So far, a hundred for or three for three. Their dad, older brother, or like friend <laughs> who like wanted to play with them have gotten in them in World of Warcraft. Okay, okay. So uh, I, I'm imagining uh, there was like a transition. Well, some do have this transition, and some are just born, like, just natural born killers. Um, did you have like a competitive complex immediately, or did that happen over time? Uh, no. So. My, when it comes to PvP in particular, um, I have like it's sort of it's sort of come and, and gone over the years. Um, but I have a very stark memory of my very first arena win. I I remember it very uh, clearly. Um, so I I had this uh, this good friend of mine. We both played hunters in TBC, and you, you're aware that was the era of like the the welfare epics where you could just you could queue up ten games, lose all ten games, and you'd, you'd still get points, and eventually you'd be able to buy a really good weapon with your zero percent win rate. Um, so we, we were queuing up, I think this was like two or three weeks and we'd, we'd not won a game. Um, and, uh, we had a situation where we got a, a cross kill. So it was, so I, I was alive and it was like a rogue or, or warrior or some, some whatever. Um, and I landed a, a trap on him, uh, as a, as a hunter. And I remember having, having some time to think about what came next. And it was that moment of like, you know, when you've, when you've, you've got the ball, there's one defender in front of you. Like, you know, it's, it's a very sports analogous thing. <laughs> And I just have, having the time to get you know forty yards away, uh, line up the aim shot, line up the conk shot, and just I just felt you know uh, uh, amazing at the end of it. Ugh. So that 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 was that was when I first felt that real like uh, like uh, the, the the term glory and shame. There was that one essay of uh, in the nineties about glory and shame as being like the key linchpin of these online experiences, and um, and I I felt it in that moment. Um, oh, so so <laughs> yeah, so I've. I, ca I came and went with Arena over the next be ten years or so. Um, I, I I played quite a bit of Arena in Wrath as a resto druid. I think I got uh, two point one in two as, as a resto druid, like cl clicking every button, um, playing with a, a warrior with a shadow maw and that sort of thing. Um, but I didn't really like commit to PvP as a thing to do until um, Legion. And that was that was simply because I'd been trying to make it work as a healer for the previous uh, ten years, um, and it turns out I wasn't bad at arena. I was just a dog shit healer. That was the issue. <laughs> so when I decided to pick up a, a death knight and warrior as my characters, that's when it all started to really click for me. Okay, I got a question for you. Yes. Was yes. it within death knight and warrior where you started key binding? Uh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah. With so uh, in the midst of all this, I I had a big PVE streak. So I've I've done. Uh, my share of of uh, of big boy raiding, um, so I started key binding uh, toward the end of uh, of wrath. That's when things started to mm -hmm. step up. And uh, going into cataclysm, I, I got the uh, the razor naga and started doing that. And um, and yeah, so it, but it it was uh, PvP where I had to really pull a finger out and actually like bite the bullet and start like key bindings, you know, F and C and all and all these like proper proper binds because the mouse is a bit of a crutch when it comes to, to key binding. Um, you're able to get away with with uh, a lot more um, using the uh, the mouse. It's a nice little um, PSA. Do I still yep. see a, I still see clickers? You know, uh, playing the game. I feel like as my awareness has gotten up, I've been more and more aware of my partners and their positioning, and specifically how they control yep. their character. And mm. I'm catching them, and I'm like, oh, you're clicking some stuff. Your keyboard turning, and, and then I, I I did not know. That it was that prevalent uh, on the uh, on the ladder forever. I thought that everyone was already key binding past eighteen hundred. Mm. Everybody. Yeah. So I I have a a completed script on on clicking that I haven't uh, filmed yet because I want to pair it with a with a, a bigger key binding thing itself. Like I want to I want to critique Ooh, clicking. Right. I want I want to critique clicking, but then present an alternative and like right. want, and it's very and it's and it's very delicate because the thing is. When it comes to critiquing gameplay, right? Like you, you shouldn't have trapped there. You should use karma here. These, those are things that exist on like the game layer. But when you talk about uh, key bindings and so on, you sort of you pull up a layer into the real world, yes. and you start having you, you start taking an issue with how people's physical logistics. fingers are moving, physical yes. logistics, and and that's when it gets a lot more delicate because it's one thing to say press wings here or hodge here, but it's another thing to say 
you're moving your fingers wrong or like this this right. physical uh, action is just incorrect so you've yes. got to be a lot more delicate with how you frame and you have to be a lot more understanding of like hey uh disability plays a big thing here like you know i i, I have a friend who uh certain key binds are just off limits because he's had a series of hand injuries and it's like right. you know, he just he physically he's broken his his uh his pinky several times and just can't do this thing that i can do um so you have to be really aware of that and that makes any discussion of key binding uh, a lot more nuanced than if, then again like going back to like you know where to stand your character that stuff is is yes. easy in comparison to discussions of like you know whether or not uh alt y is a viable key yeah because dude you hit the nail on the head okay so i used to work as a general pair mechanic and uh yep. quite often uh you could get around about 16 different steps of a lot of uh, repair jobs by shoving your appendages or your hands deep in, in, in the car so you're not taking <laughs> yeah, yeah, the parts yeah. off that are in the way yeah. and yeah, so yeah. i did that all the time dude radiators especially would just rip my hands like a fan like completely Ooh. shred them Ooh. and this pinky in particular have has always i can't say he's pink yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, <laughs> is it you are you the friend <laughs> i'm like i thought you were describing me man no, 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 no. I, your camera's not on, so I can't see the finger you're showing. Oh, but anyway, that's fine. It literally is the pinky. Oh, the the stream can. Sorry. The stream yeah, can. I need, it's I fine. Need a, I need to get. I need to get. So this is the plan choice. I'm gonna get the DSLR, and then the webcam will go back to the the the, the Discord. Listen, this is a sure. high quality podcast here. Uh, speaking of high quality podcasts, uh, we are going to be setting up the RSS feed, which means that Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Podcasts are all going to be up and running for episodes well all episodes one through five will be uploaded but episodes five and on will have that it's going to take David. a month of, pa of processing so uh Focus. yes what, 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 what happened with your pinky you're shredding your fingers i can't, with, I can't with use it that well it just it just yeah. i can't i can't press it that well yeah. so you know what i do i use what do you do? Uh, look i'm showing my mouse now you can't see it but I, I i have six buttons on the side of my mouse six yep and so i use the top three for control alt and shift oh that's that's awesome yeah, so my thumb that's, is control alt and shift. That's, yeah. actually, that's, that's that's actually really clever. I like that a lot. <laughs> and so what I do is arena one, two, and three is party one, two, and three, or player yep. and party one and two, or arena one, two, and three. And then you sort group so it's consistent forever. Yep, yep. And then boom. Yes, uh, if, if, if you're looking for a, a mod suggestion of the week, uh, dear listener, uh, sort group is a, a really good one for... Uh, sort group. Yeah, because otherwise you end up being one of those people where it's like, ah, oh, I need, you know, the, the healer to have leader in particular, and it needs to be in this order, otherwise the binds don't work. And you ever seen Cedu? He's like, give this person lead. Give this yeah, person that, lead. That, that, that's precisely who I was thinking of. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to didn't want to call Cedu out because he, the, the man the man it. can do what he wants after uh, after this after this <laughs> long. Yeah, he, he he can have he can have whoever he wants to be leader. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a good icebreaker yeah. for comms. It's like, okay, no, yeah. who's the kill target? You know. But yeah, sort group is awesome. It keeps that consistency it makes you either always on the bottom always on the top yeah. um and if you're in a, a party one two fellow like me um it's also really nice because uh the player can either be so for me i'm always on the bottom so this third button you can't see it choice but the stream can no, I can't. this third button's always me and this is always party one this is always party two for all of my abilities that can can should be able to target them without you know inefficiently yeah. getting off my target so yeah. fucking and, mind games purge done whatever the fuck and you can see how like that like that that idea of having modifiers on on the mouse is is very clever and not something that I would have thought of for my own thing. So like so the script like I, I wouldn't have either was... if Venriki was like, dude, you have to use your pinky, and I'm like, dude, I can't hmm. for like years. <laughs> yeah. So so those sorts of novel solutions, uh, like it key binds end up being a very personal thing, and it feels a bit odd to try to like prescribe like an ideal set of key binds or like, so like it's so the best you can do is sort of like gesture best practices and be like, Hey, right. if you, if, if your if your pinky is, is ruined from uh, several years of, of working on cars, uh, uh, you know, in breach of, of, uh, uh OHS, um, you know, here's, here's your own solution. Exactly. And you know uh, who actually motivated me to uh, uh, to start doing this is this Greek uh, guy. He's this Greek warrior. Or actually, he's a rep paladin uh, yeah. on Warcraft movies, uh, and he has only three fingers on his left hand. 
Hmm. And so uh, he had a razor noggin. He's like, hey, who, anyone use like interesting macros for rep paladins uh, that would help me out? And so that's what convinced me to do it. And I actually stole it from Mexico. But anyway, there's a zillion, to, to Toys' point, there's a gajillion different in a lots of zillion different ways to uh, figure out your best setup. But the, but the key yeah. thing that you need to be, uh, the key thing that I always uh, focus for with my goals on my setup is, uh, just fluid, uh, being able to be fluid. Uh, when you watch like someone like Peekaboo play the game, for example, uh, it's almost as if he doesn't have to look at his bars. Uh, yeah. It's like his full awareness is just the other player's positioning and their abilities. And that's why he's able to just take advantage of their small mistakes, whether that's like a quick cheap shot after a trinket or, or whatever. It's because he has more uh, awareness on everything else in the game that is in his key binds and his bars. Uh, and that's what that's what a good setup can give you. It can give you the ability to get to that point. Um, yes. But yeah, great topic that totally wasn't hmm. in here to be. Yeah, I was gonna say considering that I pulled it away from a uh, from like a, a fluff piece about me, I think we I think we ended up doing quite well there. Oh, oh, we're still going back to the fluff piece. <laughs> oh, we're, we're going oh, back. No, okay, no, no, no. fair, fair okay, enough. Okay, so enough. Uh, we're key bound now. We're going yep. into PvP. I think we're, where are we now? Are we in uh, Cata? Well, so I've, I've jumped oh, around. No, we're so, in uh, so, uh, yeah, so around Cataclysm, I got big into uh, PvE. So I so I escalated and ended up doing some uh, world first raiding. So like you know, I in in uh, Siege of Orgrim as a ten man guild, we got a bunch of of the heroic world firsts and so on. Um, and around the at, at the end of the first uh, tier of Ward, I, I swore it all off. I was just I was so done. That it's like never again. Um, so I spent the uh, the rest of what like doing a bit of PvP on the side. I got my first uh, tier two set as a Holy Paladin, um, and then going into Legion, I ended up doing a bunch more PvP, and that ended up being like where it became the sort of focus of my uh, time. So now now we're at Legion. Okay, okay, you so, were on P so dude, you were a hardcore PvE or you were like a raider for the longest time then. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I played a prop paladin, and we started Legion off by doing uh, keystones, and so I managed to assemble my my ragtag group of of old friends who who didn't do the the sweaty raiding, and I managed to to whip them up and shape them up into uh, being a, a decent uh, mythic plus squad, and we managed to get the realm first fifteen on. Uh, uh on the, our, our little backwater server granted but we managed to get the wrong first 15 which we really wanted to do um and then it was like you know what what now so we started doing pvp i was still playing holy and i was just i was sick of losing so as a joke i was like hey let's let's play some prot like how how worse can my prot be than holy at this rate um and we ended up actually doing fucking really well <laughs> with uh <laughs> with prot warrior uh, prop paladin and uh, bm hunter and twos so so in this this mindset of like I'm a 2k healer uh, with a lot of experience in PVE we've switched to, to PVP as prot we got 2.4 in twos and started like yeah, farming and Ruki. Yeah, yes yes yeah. so okay. so we started we, we so uh, we started ruining Vinruki's morning streams we uh, started queuing into wealthy <laughs> man and all these and all these all these actual uh, teams and they fucking hated it. Like we'd look in, we'd log into these, like we'd watch the vods of these uh, streams. And they'd be furious at us, and I felt uh, pretty bad. Um, but at the same time, like it was an in for actual games, and it felt really good. And like prot as a, like what I learned afterward is that that prot as a PvP spec is really just like a a weird version of of ret, right? Like all the all the utility is is there for both of them. The off healing is available, but prot it was just like an easy mode training wheels version of ret, um, which would allow you to also serve as a as a healer so i've sworn off playing tanks but for the first few seasons of legion um i i played prod and twos we got a bunch of raiding people got very mad at us <laughs> and with the uh release of uh season three i looked at the the, the tier sets like the elite tier sets and like warrior and dk and it's like i, I have to have them I, I need i need these uh these uh transmog sets so that's when i swore off the the prop paladin and started playing like you know conventional uh stuff and haven't looked back since. And I absolutely love that about yeah. PvP, especially when it's connected to an MMO. It's like the biggest incentive that we have is like stupid cosmetics. And I want to collect yeah. that pet because I fucking do want that pet and that mouse. Yes. And yeah. I want to look like a pretty princess at the same time. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I just want to say I, I did. I think I did uh, uh, pay my dues with the the, the tanks. So I, I made a whole video. Uh, 
uh, critiquing and criticizing the presence of tanks in, in arena in their current form. So um, I've, oh, I've, yes. I've done what I, I I've, I've done what I can to repent for my sins. Yes. But, um, the yes, WoW that, that... Arena fundamental videos is when yes. I discovered you, and that was about yes. two, uh, three or two years ago. Uh, uh, two, yeah. This month it's, we're in we're in two years ago since uh, the first one went big Only on two Reddit. Years ago, dude, what the hell? yeah, yeah. So that's that's when I discovered you, and so what 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 caused you to want to make Arena fundamental videos? Uh, uh, all right, so. The I've always liked making YouTube videos. Um, it's like you know, as, as someone who who came of age right as YouTube sort of was taking off. I've always had a, a love of online video as a as a, uh, a medium, we'll call it, if you want to be pretentious about it. Um, so I've I've made YouTube videos, you know, since I was you know thirteen, fourteen. But it was all PVE focused. It was all like you know, either killing raid bosses or soloing stuff, whatever. All like typical uh, boring stuff. Um, in in 2019, I got my first, and up until a few days ago, only uh, Gladiator. Um, and in, within that session, there was one, there was one game. You, like you know, there's one in a hundred games where like everything goes right. I feel like like the like the theoretical perfect game where they <laughs> like the enemy trinkets everything you want them to trinket. They give all the buttons you want and more. Just a, just a perfect win. Um, we got this perfect win, and I was so proud of it that I just I wanted to just essentially just show it off. Um, so I slapped together a four minute video where we're, we just sort of like walk through like, you know, and then they press the perfect button and then we press the perfect button and look, we win. Like, look at how, how good we are. Um, and it was, so that was essentially just like me wanting to show this, this good bit of footage that I had. Um, but then fast forward six months and I just had like a, an urge to just make something. So I, that, that video was sat at like 36 views. Um, and then I slapped together over the, over the course of a day or two. <laughs> That that beginner's video uh, that uh... I'm, I'm skipping through the very first arena fundamentals. <laughs> your weak aura is fucking hilarious for bubbling. Which, oh, oh yeah, is that which one was that? The uh... I can't say it, man. I can't say it on this side of the that's, globe. That's the, that's the one. That's the one. Because, like, well, yeah, so I died too many times holding bubble, um, particularly against RMP. So I just, I got, I told myself, you know what? I would just, whenever that aura appears, I just press bubble. No, no arguing. No. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I, it, would, it would trigger at five percent. So if I'm at five percent health, there's uh, the time for discussion is over. <laughs> press bubble. That's um, valid. <laughs> so um, it's preemptive so, decision making. So um. So uh, yeah, in ja in January of 2020, I just I had an urge to make something, so I threw together in the course of a day that video, uh, chucked it on Reddit for fun, and it ended up doing uh, really well. Um, and I th and I thought to myself, you know what? It wasn't. I, I don't I don't see myself as the as a uh, appropriate person to actually like make uh, guides in the vein of like a skill capped, right? Like I because mm. as, as as we've just discussed, like I'm I don't have a, a lengthy experience with PvP. I'm not. What I consider a good uh, play. Dang, a few you, of the people who you had producer content brain so early. Yeah, mm. that's good. I mean, that's a rarity. I'd say that's yeah. That's it. yeah so yeah, so uh, very early on, I had to confront this decision of like, you know, do I want to compete with with skill capped or or not? And right. very quickly, I decided the answer was was no. I don't want to go that route. Um, but what I did want to do is uh, is sort of. Uh, hone my craft as a sort of as a filmmaker in general to to again use a very pretentious way mm -hmm. of, of looking at it um so that's why I, like you know if you go and watch the the tank thing the immediate follow-up there's like there's a, a character arc in it and there's all this like you know there's continuity <laughs> yes. editing there's there's, there's, all, there's all this random garbage in it um and, and the videos themselves uh don't perform well because uh gaming guides in particular they're very utility focused people yeah, watch the very them. opposite of this you have a yeah, breathing so, so, room. You have character development. <laughs> yeah. So but most people, when they look when they look at for a guide on YouTube, they approach it in the same way as if they were to order a package on on Amazon, where they have they have a series of expectations and they want a utility provided from this thing. So if I want if I watch a video on how to build a computer, because I've got a I've got a unbuilt computer in the other room waiting to be put together. When I watch the Linus Tech Tips video on how to build a computer, I don't want a fucking musical number, you know. So there's there's a very clear like expectation of what it is. Um, and my videos don't necessarily follow that uh, that advice. They end up doing their own thing, and as a result, that like that tank one in particular performed performed horribly in, in terms of its actual like viewership metrics because people opened it and they're like, "What the fuck is this? Like, why he's on a couch and he looks like shit and he's <laughs> like watching himself on skill cat? Like, what like what is this?" Dude, okay, um, okay. Let me let me jump into this real quick. First of all, I really appreciate the editing style because I feel like I have been shoved down my throat the jump cut 
you know, serotonin, uh, endorphin fucking trap nonstop. You know, I think that's like, I think there's people creating content right now who are genuinely following a guide and they don't even know why they're following the guy. They just know that it works. Uh, as opposed to, to what you're putting together. Yes. Well, I understand that it's not like deliberately for that, but I, it stood out to me. And I think it okay. stood out to well, a lot of people. I want to, I want to back up because I don't want to paint anyone who, who, <laughs> like any, any, I don't want to paint any creators who like, who upload VOD footage as like lesser, right? So, so you, you and I both know the, the, or the polar of... opposite of that, which is just like, just jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. Yeah. They're like, a lot of like the documentaries on Netflix, me and Hannah get really upset at that because we have content brain because we're in the industry. Mm. Uh, yeah, but like, <laughs> it, we'll watch like a documentary and I'll be like, we just jump cut to 16 different versions of different B-roll. And, yeah. uh, and we just know that they're just trying to get our attention. And then they're like, and then they could not build on this mountain for 14 years. And then like, yeah. you'll have like 40 minutes will go by and it's like a different B-roll. And it's a different guy saying 14 years went by and they still didn't, they weren't able to build on this mountain. Like, and it's like, they're just yeah. saying the same thing over and over again to milk the content. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I guess I'm just defensive of that. Now that I know yeah. that that is common practice in a lot of media, especially YouTube videos, I'm super defensive yeah. of that. And so when, when I saw you on a couch, I'm like genuine content, sign me the fuck up. Let's go. Yeah. Well, so I, I want to, I want to play devil's advocate here in favor of, of the, the i i don't want to name names because again i, I don't want to paint people who upload stream vods as making less stuff because you you as i said you are in the business so you know excuse me you know the money the like you know, you know how the industry works and what it takes to actually pay rent as a content yes. creator for especially making making gaming stuff yep. um the, the stuff that i make ha is is just a terrible business decision because it takes hundreds <laughs> of hours yes. like, so, so so my, my awc video hundreds of hours of work it made uh 12 bucks 12 bucks uh, US. <laughs> I know. Like, like not, not, not a good business model. But if you're someone who is, uh, is good at, good at, uh, World of Warcraft, like, let's say that you're, uh, like, just for an example, let's say you're, you're, you're a super tease, right? So you've, you've got your, your, your finger in lots of different, uh, pots. You're, you're streaming throughout the day. And, and within that, you're, you, you're playing the game. So you are switched on with the game itself. You have the expertise, you have the experience with like the current meta. You then take that and you can do the stream game. You can do the stream hustle, but you can, within that, you also take a uh, video from that and you upload it to, to YouTube to fuel your, your Twitch. Like there is a, there is an established network that, uh, that flows through. And I have plenty of respect for that night because I know that's what it takes, right? Like, yes, if you want yes. to pay rent as a content creator, you have to be able to turn stuff over. And uh, uh, gaming content is very timely because you've got like, you know, you have the, the 9.1.5 meta tier list. You've got the guide on how to play Moonkin in 9.2. You've got good legendaries for the start of 9.2. And there's appetite for yeah. that content. There yes. absolutely yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so you've, you've got to be able to turn that stuff over quickly. And people who watch that sort of stuff, like like when I watch a, a guide on Dragon Ball Fighters, like a combo list, I, I'm i there again for that for that utility. I want I don't want to be entertained because the game's doing that. I want... I want the, the the list that has been part. I want someone who knows the combos to give me the list of combos and demonstrate how they're done, so I can go back to being entertained by the game. So I I don't have any issue with people who, like with with the formula of making uh, gaming content because that's what it takes to survive in the industry. I'm very fortunate that I uh, don't have to hang my hat on this sort of thing, so I'm able to make things uh, that I want to just make, as opposed to having to pursue uh, ad revenue and pursue that that sort of. Uh, that sorry, I've lost, lost train of thought. I don't need to pursue getting paid, so hence I can make an anthropological analysis of arena comp names as opposed to a tier list for the meta. And you know, uh, as much as 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 high as the appetite is for the content that you just mentioned, um, uh, there I think that there is also an appetite for the type of uh, silly content that you're creating, but I also think that you're fighting uphill against, um, a lot of what you're doing in this long format is directly contradicting a lot of the best practices of the algorithms mm. of the different platforms, yeah. you know, and Absolutely. So, yeah. but, but, but that being said, I, I genuinely like that type of content way more and long form content. I think it is popping off. I think that we generally overall are, are valuing podcasts more and more. And that's another reason why I put it together is because I, I'm valuing more in my, in my own personal life, being able to have more than a 15 second soundbite to uh, articulate something that you're a point that you're passionate about i think is yeah. required i mean we talk about all of these different discussions 
and all these different arguments. And I'm sure you've seen it on your own timeline or your own Thanksgiving, uh, you know, uh, family reunion or whatever. People disagree on a bajillion things in the world right now. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, with the lack of open dialogue. And yeah. I think podcasts yeah. are a great way to, to, to at least have it a little bit. And that's what I wanted. Like I dude, the excuse to be able to sit here and talk to you for two hours we weren't ever going to make this happen j- organically. I, should we have? Yeah, probably. But we're, we're, human beings are fucking flawed and we're all busy, you know, yeah. and this is exactly why and, I wanted to do this. Yeah, and, and, in, and in 2022, if you're going to talk to someone, you may as well monetize it. Just, <laughs> you, you may you, as well monetize you, it. Listen, just, just do the it. dojo's just do not it. monetized. No monetization <laughs> yet. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is like monetizing quotations in the sense like <laughs> you know, make content out of it, out of every conversation you have if you can get away with it. Dude, you know, I, at, at this point, if <laughs> just just ta- just ta- take Bezos's money. Like, you know, like it's it's late. We're, we're in 2022. We're in late, uh, late capitalist hellhole. Just take the bag. <laughs> Speaking it. of so Bezos's money, let me just give a quick shout out to all of my subscribers. I have subscribers now, man. You have subscribers now. I didn't, I dude, I Hell didn't even yeah. know that I had a sub button. I remember back back in my day, we had four parties just for chance to get his sub button. They refused to give soda pop and a sub button back in the day. Good can time. you can you imagine? Oh god, <laughs> they refused to give the, him the, a sub can button. You, can you imagine being the guy who didn't give soda pop and the sub button? I got yeah. eleven subscribers, man. I'm really on the up. Oh. And up. I'm really on the up and up. Yo, thank you for all of the subs. But for, 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 but for real, uh, the, the, the long-term strategy of the dojo is to just talk to as many people as humanly possible and get as many perspectives as, as, uh, on World of Warcraft as humanly as possible. Because hmm. if your videos have taught me anything or being able to talk to the players actually one-on-one has taught me anything is that um, there is a lot more to this community than is on this, oh, that what meets the surface. But yes. I fucking and- I fucking love that you make these videos and spend a hundred hours into them, and and I love that, and I think that people when they watch it they immediately kind of get that, you know what I mean? They, they yeah. immediately kind of get the, the labor of love. Yeah. So I like looking at the the metrics. I know that a lot of people bounce bounce often, and that's that's fine because again we're going against the algorithm, we're going against common sense yes. in a lot of ways. But the people who do connect with it do connect with it and that's that's Deep what is so, sort of sort of rewarding is i i do recognize a lot of names in the uh in the comment box um a lot of people like you know like the, with, with the most recent upload because like you know i went dark for a for a year there for a few different uh reasons and like you know all the same names were still popping up like oh my god a new thing like you know it's um i, I don't even play wow anymore but no nah. <laughs> but, um, which of course, yeah. which of course is that, that was, that's sort of like a, a like a grim thing in its own sense. Like I wasn't exactly excited to hear I don't play WoW anymore, but um, but like you know, it's still it's nice to know that like you know, there's there is a small group there that's excited to see what I I do, and and again, like at the end of the day, my goal isn't to try to like hijack um, the the audience of a skill cap or whatever. Like I'm doing my own thing, and. And if and if people uh, enjoy it, then that's that's awesome. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, one thing that I, I do really like about uh, uh, your videos is specifically the the amount of uh, oh, what's the word? One of my coworkers says this: the thoughtfulness behind it. Uh, uh, in case you guys didn't know, I, I highly recommend you go and check out his uh, arena comp or what is it? Wow, arena fundamentals. W A F. Yes, it, for- it was again, t- terrible branding. It's an awful. <laughs> Listen, we don't have to talk about Taylor. But I, I used to make events that were the the global finals of the World of Warcraft World Final Championship. Dude, we we've all made mistakes. We've learned from it. We, we move we move on. But the, it's a fantastic series, okay? And I highly recommend the uh, the AWC video in particular. Uh, sure. But uh, with, have you have, have you watched the uh, the comp name video yet? Because I know as of last week you hadn't watched it. The comp name video is currently on uh, me and Hannah's, oh, uh, what is okay, it, watch right. later. On, no, 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 no. on the watch later. It's, no, no, it's, fair, it's, enough, fair enough. I have to, man. I have so many people I'm told I'm going to make videos. You know who else asked hmm. me to watch their videos every time they release a new video? Okay, I, did, I didn't ask you to don't hey, reframe my yeah, words. He, <laughs> yeah, he emailed me, guys. He put it on my calendar. It was yeah. weird. It was weird. Please, please, please watch this. 
<laughs> ben Ruki's videos have been popping off too. I think everyone's they, videos they have, in the community. Is, Jelly Beans' videos have gotten better. Let's do Channimals is fu- hit. I remember when Channimals, like the second week in, he's like, yeah, I'm quitting. I'm not going to make videos anymore. This is too much work. <laughs> yeah. And his YouTube channel is fucking popping off, dude. But it's it's tough. It, uh, consistency is, is king. It really is. Mm, and no, when no. you're putting 100 hours into each uh, of your videos, it's going to take uh, it's going to take a while of ramp the, up. But yeah. I, I, I do want to say one thing, and I've said this a gajillion times uh because i really do love it uh i think that the best way to create long-term fandom is to do right by that one fan that you know wants the same thing as you because you know exactly what they want so cater to that person and really do right by them and then they'll give you more perspective to do right by another person and they'll also recruit more people because the best way to get more people interested in something is to make one person really fucking excited about it because we're all so defensive to getting sold something nowadays we're all so defensive to for you know jumping on the next bandwagon or uh but like i think that the best way to get people interested in in word of mouth and i think that's through content like you had that you've made so i mean that that's kind of my whole philosophy on esports too yeah well i was i was having this conversation a day or two ago about um about like all to go back to what you were just saying um because because success on youtube involves following a set of, of best practices and so it means that a lot of stuff that succeeds tends to look the same or, or include a lot of the same markers in terms of like, you know, uh, the, the latest trend is to have like essentially like a five second trailer of like your best bit at the start of a video to, uh, mm. to like to to promise the viewer that like, you know, like the this this thing we've we've promised you is coming, right? Like, you know, we're, like we're, we're building this this car out of bread. Here's, here's a shot of the final bread car. Um, <laughs> yeah. please, 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 please stick around through our ad reads and so on. So, so that structure of like trailer, intro, ad, can, uh, then we start. Um, that's like a very familiar thing at this point. There's so in a way, time almost. Yeah. So in a in a way, like intentionally breaking that uh, that formula and being like, hey, here's here's a, a, a slow ramp up is sort of like a, a thing that the some people respect, but also in the attention economy, like that. Sometimes showing the bread car in the first five seconds is the smarter move because <laughs> yes. you, know, like, you know because it, even even like you know because I, I saw the metrics for a for a video with a couple of million views yesterday and it's still like you know, even even at that view count you still have like a forty percent drop off in the first thirty seconds. Oh like, yeah, the amount of yeah. people who the amount of people who click on then then close if they're not satisfied with like what they see immediately it's very very high. Yeah. Um, but but also when the numbers are that high, there's not really much you can do about it because that's just how people behave like you know i i do it as well not to you know yeah. try to uh if i do, especially if it's in the middle of the work day dude i, don't, I ain't going time for that and yeah. mindfulness yeah. and not freaking out about every little <laughs> yeah. thing yeah hell no uh yeah. but but one thing uh, as well is you might you might lose the attention of some but but, but those who do stick around to your point like they're they're going to be no. really engaged well uh, another another thing i've sort of i struggle with is uh, my my favorite uh, documentaries and, and YouTube videos, like they, they tend to. I, I love when a when a video or product will sort of start. It'll start as one thing, and it'll it, it will reveal itself to be something else, right? So like this mm. this this uh, documentary about the, about flat Earth is actually about QAnon, to to use a, an uh, an example. Or this this like you know this guy who like this this uh, pr- presenter is is a, a character, and this character has a flaw, and they learn they resolve their flaw over the course of the uh, the episode. So like my my tank thing, like I played a character who was pro tank, uh, celebrated uh, playing a tank in arena learn to hate tanks by the end like very clear narrative arc Um, yeah yeah yeah. dude narrative narrative arcs when talking about a world of warcraft guide video is like breaking my mind right now this is the merging of worlds so so the the uh the compliance video when you eventually get around to seeing it you'll see that it's probably the most extreme with that sense of like it starts as one thing and ends in a very different place. Oh, okay. and that's, no spoilers, man. No, no I'm, I'm not spoiling. But the, Wait, but the can point I, is, like, can I watch your stream? Can I watch your videos on stream? Can I react? Can I react, Andy, to your videos? For you, for you, David, absolutely, you can. Oh yes. my God, I got react. I, I, I've, 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 I will sign off on that. Oh my um, God. So, uh, so yeah, so as much as i like that as an artistic bit to have things like start one way and end somewhere else what it means is if you if your if your goal is to start with an with a character that's going to change it means 
presenting it, the opening of your thing as a as like a character that is unlikable, for instance, right? So like these are uh, the unconscious things that a lot of people I think take for granted when they're watching any sort of movie or anything like that. But yeah. these are these are the this is how people get unconsciously emotionally tied to things, yeah. and uh, yeah. it, there's a science behind this. Uh, there absolutely is, and trying to figure that out has been something that because yeah. a lot a lot of this narrative creation and character. Uh, creation is very applicable to trying to elevate an individual player story in an esport. Mm, yes, yeah. So th this is this is very much because this ties back into the idea of like these videos are designed to to cultivate my abilities as a as a filmmaker. So that means incorporating things like a character who changes. But in but within the attention economy, within the utility folks of, of gaming stuff, what it means is pe people often first of all they don't even like they're not in the mode of assuming that they're going to get a performance right so you'll open up a video uh, about positioning and there'll be a, like there's a, a thing happening it's like what's what's what what is this um so people just take they take it authentically and assume that you're just fucking annoying and, and they close the video <laughs> um, which which again t t totally reasonable so a lot of these yeah. things sort of work against me and and I, I i try to work against it like i shouldn't do this but then i keep i keep going back to it so so with uh like the next big project that I'm likely to get get done is a, a video on on add-ons, and the initial premise of of that was like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll do like the traditional add-on thing where I'll, I'll recommend weak auras and da, 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 da. but then the more I I was writing about, the more I found myself like getting caught up on like the discussion of like the like the more the more interesting discussion of like you know should add-ons be in World of Warcraft? What influence do add-ons have in World of Warcraft? Why were add-ons uh, removed from the AWC and why were they reintroduced into the AWC? Like those those questions were for far more interesting to me. So I how ended did up you getting get more the answer to these questions. Like, I know the answers to all of these questions because I was there. But how the fuck did you get the answer to these questions? Well, so what, what, let's see. Uh, first of all, I don't actually know if I have the answers. I have what I believe Ooh. are the answers to these questions. Um, but so the so the the plan with that script, like in its current draft form, the idea is that it starts as a traditional guide but like the these questions keep like sticking it's like you know look at that so like, react andy i'm gonna plug my react andy for this video later <laughs> listen I'll I'll, yes. I'll 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 be sure i'll i'll let you know how accurate he is but i'm gonna be honest with you based off of how accurate you were accurate accurate ac no i'm just not gonna say it anymore uh how how close you were to uh, reality on the AWC video on, and especially on how GCD and how all those opportunities, there were some things that I genuinely don't know where you learned that, but it was hundred percent correct. I don't, yeah, I don't I, think there was anything in that video where me and Hannah were like, wait, that's not how it went down. Everything was pretty on point. Yeah. Me Mez uh, did a, a, uh, a restream of that, uh, that video. And that was terrifying because if there's few people who know more about the AWC's history than mess, cause he was like <laughs> yes. there for almost all of it. Yep. And then he was like, he was tilting his head a little bit and going, uh, not quite. Or, um, nah. And I'm just like, ah, nah. Now granted, like, I know he was like, he's in the most weeds possible because again, he was in the room for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I, I can live with Mez being one of the few people who, who high can, level uh, big beats. You nailed it. For real, hundred percent, and I think I think a lot of the nuance you nailed too. Like you're like, oh, this is probably what the what the players were thinking based off of this, uh, and this is probably what Blizzard was thinking based off of this, with just ancillary outside data. And you fucking nailed you nailed mm. what I was thinking <laughs> as the Blizzard perspective, at least, yeah. and, and yeah. a lot of those situations. And it made me feel fucking super duper validated. And so mm. I know that when uh, there's other people that are watching the other thing, like for example, the prop. Paladins going through the same challenge that you were going through, or, <laughs> or, or whatever, and, and or no a lot sympathy. of the, <laughs> no, or, sympathy. no sympathy, or a lot of just like the the comedy that you kind of put in is just kind of like uh, filtered with with empathy of people in similar niche situations. Yeah, well, so I. I think one one of the things I'm, I'm most grateful for is I have quite a diverse network of people who play the game. So because I like you know I've got I've got the PVE background, I've got the PVP background. Nice. I, I I haven't I haven't sort of been assimilated into the I I, I don't again I don't, I don't want to name names, but there's a certain type of attitude that's prevalent in the uh, arena scene, um, which I was sort of able to like quarantine myself from. Um, and whenever I get too close in, into that mode, I like I go hang out with my idiot clicker friends, um, and they very much like bring me back down to earth of like, hey, like not everyone feels this way, um, and that sort of helps keep keep it all grounded. Um, so I, I'm very grateful to have I'm I'm very grateful to have that diverse uh, spectrum of people I, I can play the game with and have a diverse understanding of like what people want and think of uh, of these various systems. Um, 
but yeah, so the, uh, just to just bring it back to just so I can finish the point about the, the add-on thing. Um, I, I like the idea of like it, it starts out as a straight guide, but like the more interesting questions just keep sort of like pricking and just sort of like like a thorn in the side. Like keep coming back to these like bigger questions, and so then it, it eventually we drop the pretense and like get into like a a, a more ge- a general discussion about like add-ons as a presence in the esports scene because there are there are, I couldn't find any other games that are, are that are remotely like Warcraft in the uh, like any other esports that use third party. Uh, software to this <laughs> degree yeah no. that, so yeah. The, the, the closest comparison i could find was uh team fortress 2 which has a very locked down uh uh system that allows players to modify the uh the Funny ui um yeah. but it's but they like it's it's basically a single text file where you can like move the same information around so you can you can put the health bar somewhere else you can change how the health bar looks but you can't plug in new you information can't you can't change the textures you can't you, yeah. No. So, so it like they have a lot of control over that. Whereas, uh, World of Warcraft, like it's easier to name the things you can't do with an add-on than the things that you can do. Um, and uh, that that comes back to World of Warcraft's roots as an as a two thousands era RPG, and that's when things really start to get out of control. We have to start talking about you know Elder Scrolls and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, so I, I don't I don't want to get that in the weeds. Um, but uh, but add-ons represent a very unique challenge for. Uh, for World of Warcraft Arena, um, and I'm not fully formed on on that subject yet, so I don't want to get into that discussion today because I'll make an ass of myself. Fair but enough. Um, Fair it's, but it's but it, it's it's fascinating the the challenges that World of Warcraft has to deal with because it is utterly unique as an esports title, like as a yes. as a product, it, it there's nothing like it, and so it has a lot of challenges that it has to to solve. It's unique. It has a lot of unique challenges, but I also think because of that, it has its own unique opportunities. And it, it does. It, it's yeah. yes, absolutely. It, sorry, I, I, sort of, I, I ran. I, maybe I ran with the negative there rather than you know like, we uh, should. the positive. I think what we need. I think we need to bring this back, man. I think we need that. I, I, yeah, I think you're gonna have to come back, and we're gonna have to talk about it after you release the video. This is a video Fair that's enough. unreleased, we, right? I, 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 yes, yeah. No. So uh, there's, okay. a, there's a draft version of it, but it's it's not uh, done. I also noticed that we are uh, an hour in, and we haven't even really gotten to to the news yet so at what point do we wrap up this fluff piece listen okay 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 yeah we're we're wrapping up the fluff piece now if you uh, aren't sold on this gentleman and his uh content creation i don't know what will make sure to go and check out his youtube channel and watch the videos themselves i highly recommend uh the the big one that popped off which was like how to get gladiator probably and then the one after that which is my personal favorite the awc that talks about me Mm. so you'll you'll at least a little bit uh so please go and enjoy the content my pick is uh, not an, uh, a a WAF video at all. It's it's my undead paladin video. Actually, no. You know what? Watch, watch my cooking video. Have, have you seen the that? David? Have you seen my cooking video? I saw the yeah, thumbnail. It's... That's it. Is it any good? You... <laughs> it's it's pretty good. I, if I could recommend any video, watch watch my cooking video. It's the it's right, the least right. popular thing I've ever ever made, but it's. It was a lot of fun Listen, to make. As as someone who's also on the up and up, who will be uh, competing in either Austin Show or Hassan's, what is it? What are they calling the the, the Master Chef thing, Hannah? The the big king of ki- the kitchen or some shit. Anyway, uh, someone's gonna make a Master Chef on Twitch, and my plan is to compete, bro. Uh, follow me on Do Twitter it. if you want to see it. my my awesome cooking. I'm not good at it yet, but I'm gonna get. I mean, you, you've 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 shown I need some my, pretty, pretty. I need good a character arc. I appreciate that, I, I, but I need somewhat of a character arc. Okay, hmm. go follow Choice on YouTube. Peace. Go into the next topic now, which is Zero to Hero Challenge. You have a little bit written yes. down about this. I've been watching Absters and Zero to Hero Challenge. I've been watching Jelly Beans and Zero to Hero Challenge. Peekaboo, Sea-Doo. Me- I don't think actually Sea-Doo or Mez have been doing mm. it. sea has been busy, you know, no. in the hospital. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you, Sea-Doo. And then, uh, but I-, I think it's a very, very interesting very very interesting challenge specifically yes. because it touches on one of the biggest criticisms that every uh pvp player seems to have which is a uh, barrier to entry to competitive arena and it kind yes. of ch- takes that on in the face yeah so so let's back up just a second and talk about what zero to hero is for the uh the uninitiated because oh, this is such a yes. grassroots thing that um zero what it precisely challenge. is what it precisely is is a little bit uh muddled so Zero to Hero is a uh, self-imposed, very broad um, uh, challenge that people have uh, tried out in, in numerous uh, areas of, of World of Warcraft, which it basically involves um, trying to emulate a, uh, a new player's experience. So uh, experienced arena players, they, not only do they have a geared character, but they also have a network of contacts and people they play with. 
So the question is, if I if I roll a new character and if I uh, don't play with my friends, how difficult is it to uh, succeed? So earliest example of this kind of thing I could find was actually uh, the WoW Economy uh, Reddit. Someone um, a year or two ago uh, started a new character, gave it five thousand gold, and basically said, like, you know, from from this and nothing else, can I? How much money can I make just playing the auction house? If I just like, you know, fall back on like the the fundamental things, if I buy low, sell high, how much money can I make in a week? So that, that's the sort of thing that any uh, player would be able to do theoretically with that knowledge. Um, and this is interesting because it is an opportunity to. Uh, to review the systems, like you know, the, the way the game is built, what is the the new player experience, what is the the gameplay experience, of having to get your conduits up, and so on. How long does that take nowadays? Um, it's been quite interesting to uh, to watch in that sense, for sure. Uh, I personally love it because it really does highlight the 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 qualms that we've been. But it, it makes me feel a bit validated. Like, obviously, I've been on Twitter, and I also had that tweet about how Hannah ended up uh, giving up on Qin, and mm. Tali and, and Panda also came in and chimed in on that. And I, I do think that, like, when it comes to PvP players whining about character progression, there's kind of been a stereotype that we've been combating for forever uh, from the from mm. the hardcore grinders who really do enjoy those tedious things, uh, at least tedious to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> boss, yeah. I, I don't understand how but cool i mean it's probably because they could stream 12 hours a day and don't have anyway um I mean, that, I mean, that you, helps you, 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 that yeah you, you, you're touching on some stuff there aren't you um, <laughs> a little bit but but realistically uh the zero to hero has really shown the tangibles of how much work it really does take to get to a point where you can be even relatively competitive um, and yeah. I mean, taking these, taking the world's best players, like uh, more than a more than a couple weeks, or like even hours and hours and hours of gearing. And I've noticed that the starting point, again, not to split hairs about what this challenge actually is, has changed depending on who who you're watching as well. Some people yeah. will grab the conquest gear. Some people will go full blue, full blue. It's pretty nice. Yeah, and and that's and that's uh, you can see the note I've got in there. Like, so that that was precisely the the hair I didn't want to split is whether or not you have to start in blues or if you can mail over the boxes. Um, for for me, it's it's irrelevant uh, to the to the broader point of uh, of players because it to me the thing that sort of is the biggest barrier are other things like um like conduits and right, the the, right. the the honor grind and and the networking right now like like engaging with LFG to um and to work through the disparity of gear at lower crs right now so like you know you i've uh, i've got a note here of just how bizarre the low cr experience is right now in arena <laughs> because you've got you, you've, you've got these these characters who like yeah so the 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 god how do, how do i even start on this the the low end of of uh the, the ladder is completely scuffed because you've got uh most new alts now are, like are coming from uh, players who've had the ability to mail across all the boxes. So they're starting in base PvP gear. And so they they get fed on by people in full duelist gear, but they themselves will still own anyone who uh, anyone else who still is st still in the blues. Right. So the end res the, the end result is Yeah, the, the end result is that like the ladder's a, a mess where so I I've I queued on my my warrior recently and this was just after placement. So like maybe the MMR was still a bit funky, but for the most part like it, it was no longer the, the weird thing where you're like, you know, in blues, but you get a 900, 900 MW. We were past placement games. And I so we got a a warlock in rival gear with an adaptation trinket on and a hunter with no trinket on who walked out and died first global, right? They just came out and died. <laughs> yeah. and, and, then the, and then the very next game we got was two full duelist, uh, like it was a full duelist uh, disc priest and, a, and an AF warlock. So just like back to back. And technically the, the adapt uh, warlock had a higher M MMR than the other one. So it's so it's a complete uh, mess right now, and I think the zero to hero is interesting because it, it both is it's fueled that and has showcased it, but it's also kind of stabilizing the ladder in that sense. If that makes sense because there are it's actually people activity. who are coming in. Right. Yeah, it's it's feeling it's feeling activity, but also zero to hero in particular. These players aren't allowed to like grab a, a mate in full gear to just like boost them real quick. Right. Right. So there's so there's, there's I'm trying to get a lot of different thoughts straight. 
end result, there's, low, there's low so CR. There's so many different there. variables. Because I think that what's happening is there's, I mean, this we're dealing with the consequences of like 16 different like Band-Aid fixes to these systems. Yes. Like the yes, boxes absolutely. that we're shipping back mm. to our alts, that's a Band-Aid yeah. fix. Like all, it is. It is so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so I think, uh, but with one thing I will note that I've been personally really enjoying about this challenge is seeing these pro players interface with looking for a group. Like the actual mm. tool and having to yes. whisper players and like just getting their general reactions to how people interact in chat whether they like mm. they'll put in chat like all right who do you guys want to go here and then they'll be like this is good we need to figure out who our kill targets are against certain compositions and it's almost like though all of those steps we never get to see the competitive players go through because they're always with their team they're always yeah. with that tried and true and so it's just like transitional period we talk about how streaming has changed the game completely because uh, information distribution is nuts i'd say information distribution in regards to gameplay mechanics and gameplay strategy and, and stuff like that but when it comes to the psychology of things there's still so much missing in world of warcraft we talk about how social game it is there's so much psychology involved in the competitive aspect of the game the way that these players like the pro players and zero to hero interact with people in lfg and they they go to them and they say hey uh, you know, are you willing to play and how they interpret, uh, the reaction is so different to how I was interpreting the reaction. And, and they're so much more empathetic and patient because they just know what they're getting into before they go in and their ladder anxiety is yeah. obviously not there. They have a main, you know, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like all of those things are so important too. And this just puts way much more, yeah. more emphasis on that too. Just kind of brings yeah. them to light. It's 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 also nice to see, even though as we pointed out, there's a lot of work involved in this. This is not something that just like anyone can like pick up and do uh, for the hell of it. It's nice to see like uh, alts sort of take up uh, a place again because really this has been a very alt unfriendly expansion. So I I don't think many of these pro players would otherwise be picking up things that they're uncomfortable with because it's just like why why bother. Like, you know, why, why would Absurge play Fury Warrior um, if there wasn't some incentive to right. uh, to drive him toward doing that? And it's beneficial to us because we all want to see fucking Absurge play Fury Warrior. <laughs> the clip yeah, potential. Yeah. Hello? I, I, yes. The soju consumption needed. And, and, and that, and that, that uh, sort of brackets us into uh, to the, to the, to the original point I dotted down here. I'm interested to see if anything comes of this because part of, part, like, implicit in the Zero to Hero challenge is this idea of, like, you know, Absurge should try something different, something that he's not familiar with. If Absurge just rolled a fresh shaman, which I believe he has done as part of this, but if he, if he just continually rolls new shaman, uh, some of the magic is lost there. Seeing, them, Super, seeing Absurge yeah. pick up something new is interesting so uh, i know he he just finished with uh, mistweaver monk um so i'm wondering if there'll be any implications for comps in the awc because whilst i don't i'm not pre pretending that absurge is mistweaver is awc ready it is at the very least a uh introduction and lays a platform for him if if cdu is right and uh, mistweaver pops off uh next season absurge is ahead of the game he's already you know 2400 lfg um uh ready and which like you know that's like that's 2800 when you're in an actual group you know that's that's insane when players play more classes um everyone benefits i, I was saying this as well like if the game also had more like the boxes are huge if there was more ways yeah. that players could play more alts we would things that are just blatantly broken would get nerfed faster because more people would be playing it uh, yeah, no. That's... there's just so much benefits to encouraging players to play more than their main class spec yeah, so th this, I don't know if I want to even get in, into this. Uh, so so one, one of the key elements to me of, of competitive games is like access to new stuff. So if you, if you play a fighting game, when I, when I, when I bought Dragon Ball Fighters, I, I could just, I could pick Gohan and, and he would be ready. And when I found out that I'm actually terrible at Gohan or that Gohan is, is the hardest guy to play, I was able to pick, <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was able to, to pivot and play Super Saiyan Vegeta instead and, and fix the issue. Um, uh, as a competitive title, I think having like having specs be inaccessible as they are right now is is quite dangerous. And you're absolutely right that in a way, like uh, balance is sort of protected by just the fact that like, yeah, Necro DH is insane right now, but accessing it is so difficult. Like, like <laughs> taking advantage of it is such a commitment that very few are actually willing to put in the work.
Right. And to, but to, to, to if more people did put in that work, you know, there'd be a lot more motivation to get that thing yeah. Uh, yeah. balanced out. Um, all, all I've wanted from Warcraft for the last few years are, are alt friendly expansions. And every time I end up just eyeing the previous thing and going, wow, like I didn't know how good I had it. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, season yeah. four of, of BFA with the absurd corruption requirements, like having to wait for the correct thing to come up on the vendor and da, 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 feels, feels fucking easy compared to having to, uh, to reacquire your conduits. And Especially in COVID, honor, I'm like, honor grind. Hey, this free time but i can't do it i just can't get myself to do it dude yeah uh no like, I, and you know i think it's because i was talking to venriki about it my end game is alts too for hmm. sure and i think it's because we like the gameplay like we like the pure mechanical gameplay of the game a lot and we value that a lot but there's a lot of people yeah. like we were talking about that thread earlier the the aesthetics I mean, if I had World of Warcraft that was a tournament realm and I could just play the gameplay that I liked and I looked like fucking Gumby, I wouldn't care. I just, that would be my, pre but I also know that that's only my preference. And I know that the reason why the game in general is dope and the reason why it's so diverse and cool is because we have a lot of different preferences and perspectives and I want to be part of a game with more than, than one perspective. To your point earlier, when you get done uh, with all the hype beasts, you go and hang out with your like clicker friends and you kind of get like a, a better you, you readjust your perspective on reality. And yeah. that's what I love. Yeah. I love how, how many different people I get to, to have conversations with within World of Warcraft. And I don't want to homogenize the demographic of WoW, but I also want to champion that, you know, you know, it's, this, this reminds me of a tweet that, that one, of the, one of the Echo Raiders, Flex, tweeted. Are you familiar? Uh, no. Okay, so Flex is uh, an Echo Raider. He's also a mega troll on Twitter, and he tweeted something that I fucking loved. And he said, I don't know. The beauty of WoW is the freedom to do whatever you want uh, to do for fun or change. Uh, but the past expansion, you're somewhat forced to do everything for, for a bit of gains, and it just personally burns me out doing anything at all. PVEing for PvP and vice versa doesn't hit for me. And mm. as much as I love the ability to go and do more things within World of Warcraft or... Or say, get that one trinket that's OP in Arena, or this or that. I just think that, to, to, to Tawli's point, uh, it's not an MMO without a little bit of character progression, sure. But yeah. I, there, there's, a, there's a harmony well, that we're looking for, and I don't think we're there. Yeah, so, God, I, I keep like circling like this this big project that I can't, I, it has just exploded and it's just like, I can't, I don't, I don't want to talk about it because the weeds never end. But, um, <laughs> but the, it's, yeah, there's, there's the, the fundamental <laughs> question of what, what is World of Warcraft PVP actually? Is it, is it an adaptation yeah. of a RPG? Is it, is it an RPG MMO? Sorry, is it an RPG action game, which means that things like power and progression and grind and all these things are, are present, or is it a is it an offshoot? Is it a branch that sits by itself? Right. Um, because and it sounds like a subtle distinction, but really, like we're getting into like church schism levels of, of uh, nitpicking here, um, because it, that that defines what the the values are. So if if we're adapting an RPG, if we're saying that this is um, Elder Scrolls with with uh, an arena mode. Or this is Dark Souls PvP. Then, then things like gear and talents and things all matter, and and character progression, character agency is like the big thing. That is the central appeal of those RPGs: is right. the ability to express yourself and build something interesting that represents you. That's that. But on the other side, the competitive game side, you want to be closer to like you know, like fighting games and shooters, where it's like you want things to be to to the the decimal point uh, balanced right. and 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 accessible. And so that these are two different uh genres ultimately, which we're trying they're, they're very different genres and we're trying to figure out like how how do we mingle them and in, in a way they do end up in opposition in certain Definitely. certain areas so so we had so legion is probably the closest example we had to um to isolating pvp where it's like we've turned off trinkets we've turned off power essentially what they found a way to do is to very stealthily uh, turn like your know, havoc demon hunter into a, into a single character by giving it a fixed uh, character sheet where it's like you know, it has ten percent haze, five percent verse, whatever. They were able to strip as much agency away from the player as possible and get as close as they probably ever could to like that like Overwatch fighting game thing of like this is a, this is a a fixed champion that does a precise thing. Um, and people didn't really like it. Like you know, I, I've been looking for for old criticisms of it from uh, from back in the day. I know they existed, but I haven't been able to like uh, surface any of the old ones. People wanted 
uh, RPG elements back. They wanted the ability to choose their trinket to like, you know, choose to wear a battle master or a badge. They wanted that stuff back. Um, and what we're seeing with like set bonuses being reintroduced and uh, legendaries is we're trying, I think we're trying to see the developers uh, try to get in, try, try to give PVP as some of the fun that's being had in PVE with like designing right. weird stuff. And the issue yep. we've sort of found is that especially in there's, <laughs> especially in items. So, so legendaries are, are the big thing coming to mind, and set bonuses will be the thing next expand or next uh, tier. Um, and it's had like yeah. So, so in terms of agency and RPG stuff, like you know, like legend, a lot of legendary effects are fun. Like the uh, the the chi explosion thing for Windwalks, like you know, like that that one off meta pick where like you do the chi orb explosion with the spinning crane kick, very fun. Also has the ability to break the game. <laughs> so getting getting like getting yep. these right is very difficult, and we have to sort of accept the reality that like that these set bonuses um, for, on they're the they're going to break the game like in seventeen they're, they're, different ways. So some of them are going to break the game, and others are are barely really noticeable. And they they've clearly been designed with PVE first, and I and I don't know if Link has been allowed in the same room as the people who have made these sets. Um, I I don't know if if there's been I, I highly doubt there's been any meaningful interaction with the PvP team on these set bonuses. When They've comes, just been a sort of allowed to let it rip. When it comes to PVE gear and PvP gear, especially you know in the current game and in the current guidelines, because the reality is the game is what it is right now. That obviously you know there's been murmurs about a new expansion, but. Uh, the reality is that getting this game structure to be kind of flipped on its head is just not realistic. So instead, it's just like, uh, but we're just looking at like kind of like moving the dial a little bit for nine two, and so we're yeah, looking yeah. at like what can what is going to be dropping in PVE? How is it going to affect the game? But just like we saw the PVE changes, we haven't seen any of the PVP changes yet. Uh, I'm yes. hoping there's going to be PVE PVP items. I remember Brian was saying something in the Venruki uh, call that like. You know, these PvE items are really fucking good and everyone wants them to, in PvP. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if there was just PvP items that everyone just wanted in PvP instead of... So yeah. instead of giving us the, the... You have to go in PvE for that item, you can get something equivalent or something just as cool for that slot from PvP. So he was just... Yeah. He's like, we. the complaint is that everyone has to go PvE for cool shit. What if the cool shit was in PvP too? Yeah. Yeah. I... I have loads of empathy for that thing of like that's you know, as so who, hard. As, yeah, as, that's hard. As someone, as someone who, as someone who farmed uh, um, uh, Nihilotha for months in order to not get the Dressagath trinket, um, I have <laughs> oh, a lot of sympathy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never, I never got. It. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, um, I, I do have a, a lot of sympathy for that. Um, one, I, I don't mean to keep like bringing up these like these other things where it's like, well, no, you can't have that. I, I agree broadly with the idea of like, you know, let's let's not have to raid to PvP. I that's obviously a, a very fair thing. I also wonder though, what are the impacts of accessibility? Like, so if so, you've got a raider who wants to get into to arena um, by making things more PvP exclusive. What we're sort of doing is sort of upping the barrier to entry. Right. So if you look at if you look back at at Wrath, for instance, right, um, you had a system where the PvE gear was essentially like offensive and the the pvp gear had had a resilience. most of its budget right. yeah had resilience which which shifted it towards defense so what you ended up doing uh like the people who optimized they would mix and match so that you get like up cap and then you'd go hard on the resilience or you'd play right. a low resilience build and you'd be more glass cannony and uh, pve ears would come in in their full heroic icc gear and they'd and they would be glass cannon so they'd be able, they would not necessarily do well but they would have a place where they'd be able to like right. find a foothold as they as they would slowly plug in the resilience and start to feel more stable right um right now with with versatility verse is in a really weird space where you, we, we want it on everything and it has that big bonus from from the the uh the trinkets it's like so they essentially pvp stat that worked in pve basically. yeah so i i have really Again, I, I, we, we're not getting into versatility. I'm not splitting hands on versatility. <laughs> but that, that, as, as time has passed, that set bonus, that trinket set bonus has gotten more and more potent. So I did the math yesterday to figure out, because uh, I've changed the set bonus on beta. I'm trying to figure out how much we've lost. The set bonus right now for uh, uh, for my Windwalker, I have 36% resilience. So four, so a 40% bonus to, uh, to the verse is worth 14% damage and healing. So that is a big, big, big set bonus, a big amount of like of uh, created power, imaginary budget that's been created out of nowhere from that versatility. And if you're a PVE player who instead has mastery and haste, not only are you missing out on the desirable yeah. uh, versatility, which you need, you've also lost that imaginary, like, like that created uh, power from that set bonus. So the realistically, bonus, you're saying? 
Yes, yeah, so, so, the, so the two piece for the trinkets, that 40% increase to versatility, has gotten more potent as time has gone on. So as, as your verse has gone up, more. that bonus has gone up. Compounds, <clears throat> yeah. I got so, you. So, so, that, yeah, so that is now worth 14% of my uh, Windwalker's verse. I, I get an extra 14% damage from just that bonus. So you've got, you've got, I'm in full gear. It's all verse, which is already already a desirable stat because of the, the damage reduction and so on. And then on top of that, we've we have created an additional fourteen percent damage and healing as as a result. So so someone who walks into uh, arena today with full PVE gear, they're missing a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, of desirable stat and that imagined fourteen uh, percent power. So to put so, my uh, sorry, please continue. Yeah, so uh, just just to just wrap, just bring that back. So by by emphasizing PvP exclusive stuff, you are absolutely present, pre preventing incursions from the uh, the raiders, which is a good thing. To have to have Drestigath not be uh, mandatory is a good thing. I just I worry about how difficult it becomes to get into arena right. when you've got to deal with that bigger transition. Because you have to build the character, you have to get access to the PvP gear before you can uh, actually stabilize. Which may, which may mean like you're looking for verse gear from uh, dungeons and so on, but even then, like it's nerfed, and that, that, that's that's enough. <laughs> what, what, what were you going to say, David? I was going to say this, this kind of brings it back to me, which is it's it's just accessibility to the game feature we like. <laughs> like, okay, so when we're talking about uh, arena and we're talking about more people playing the game mode, and more people falling in love with it, uh, I think a lot of people immediately jump to how do we get that Fortnite nerd to play WoW Arena? How do we get that? Well, the reality is there is millions of people who currently already have a character ha are key bound and have like a good <laughs> understanding uh, of like the mechanics of the game who hmm. could be interested or could be uh, convinced to at least try a new game mode that that seems to me like a much more yeah. uh feasible uh activation opportunity <laughs> than getting someone yeah. to make a new character and yeah. and so when, when we're looking at like the potential growth of arena accessibility from pve players matters and so i'm glad that you're bringing this up man uh, okay, okay, can i yeah so, sorry what, what's your plan for the next five minutes can i, can I tell a story real quick can i oh yeah, yeah just, absolutely just i was gonna go point? i was gonna move on to uh solo shuffle after but uh, okay. i think this is the perfect segue to a, to a story let's wait well, yeah, so, so this, this is continuing on from from this discussion this ties yeah. into, into the zero to hero stuff um i i understand the urge to not uh cross pollinate the pve pvp not wanting to do both i do think there is an argument though so in terms of like activating plays as you said um Ultimately, the best tool we have in the box is just bribery, right? Like that—that that is the strongest thing. <laughs> Go we get have. a kitty. Um, you, you, like you, you've, you've, well, yeah. So, but not not just the cosmetics, because ultimately the the. <laughs> thing is, that's just, p p people can look at cosmetics and go, oh, "I don't need a new transmog." Um, but in the so, so, so the first season, so season of Shadowlands, right? I, I have a, a, a good long friend um, who uh, was it, who's who was big into to raiding and PvP. So he would just rotate between the two, and he was big into up into RPGs. He's a grand marshal from uh, Cataclysm. So, um, so what he ended up doing is he took. This, this was the very beginning of Shadowlands where just getting a hold of purple gear was a bit of a challenge. And there was, there was good gear to be had in the last three rows of that vault. And the easiest way to get uh, get access to that was RPG. So there was a whole, uh, whole community of uh, people who did not give a shit about Arena, who just wanted to fill out that bar. And they realized that if they, if they came together and they didn't care... There, and and the opposition were the same. They also came together for the gear and didn't care. That was like that was actually for a while a thriving YOLO scene of like people who just didn't give a shit and were there for the rewards. And they, and some of them sort of ended up sticking. So in the case of of my my friend Chris here, what he ended up doing is he gathered up all his his idiot dragon slayer friends and from this uh, this raiding guild, and and like the great Roman generals, he shaped them up into like a a meaningful RBG team, and they ended up doing quite well in RBGs. And so I. I had the pleasure of attending a few sessions with them, and despite being again like these were these were raiders first and foremost, most of them did not like Arena at all. They were really switched on, and they knew what they were doing with RBGs, and they and they reached the point. I think they were they were twenty one hundred, um, and they were at the point where they had to sort of have that conversation of like, do we want to take this seriously? Right. Um, and and that was really exciting, and a lot of them really enjoyed it. And it, and ultimately, it came back to this idea of like they were there through bribery. They were there because the vault needed to uh, to be filled. There was good stuff mm. in the vault. So as much as I agree that we shouldn't necessarily like ins like compel people to to have to do everything, there's something to be said of just like what if we just 
bribe these fuckers to give arena a go and if so if so we we offer a bribe and if the product once they get in there is good a few of them will stick around a few of them will turn over this is my this is my commitment to blizzard that the more they bribe pve players to pvp the more i will champion the pvp players to be nice to them (laughs) during that week but but then this this like gets into a whole um I can't talk about this, but then this gets into the problem of like of the M plus players and the raiders right. on Twitter getting, getting really we're mad. We're causing the consequences but, of the same consequences yeah, that so, we're complaining yes. so, about. So when yes. so when when Drestigath is on is is uh, best in in raid that that's a, a a problem, but it's like it's a contained problem. It's not that big a deal if if uh, Drestigath is best in in raid. When fucking the Gladiator's badge is two percent better in PV, it's a huge fucking catastrophe because yeah. now Trill is having to play forty hours a week just carrying twos and and. <laughs> you know like like a uh, uh, jp's on twitter getting really mad like like whenever that fucking badge is any good it's a huge crisis and so now we have we like our gear is artificially deflated so you and i our tour gas is like eight percent harder than ought to be in order to make sure the raiders don't feel compelled to do any arena <laughs> and in in that sense it is the complete opposite direction of where we ought to be heading if bribery works then making the gear artificially bad to protect the fucking raiders is not the solution anyway let's talk about solo shuffle Ooh, let's that, move on. Let's move on. Listen, I'm, 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 that's a, that's a quick podcast, uh, a, a quick podcast, uh, applause for you there. That was, that was a good rant. That was a, that was a solid rant. All right, solo shuffle. It just happened yesterday. For those of you who it are did. unfamiliar, it's basically solo queue. It's three v three. You queue uh, as either a DPS or a healer. You get mixed in with uh, two different uh, players, and then you uh, play some three v three games. It's about six rounds of three v three, and the players actually interchange. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like a mini round robin thing. Not a full round robin, but like a mini round robin where everyone theoretically gets to play with each other. Yes. A very, uh, it's it's a it is a solution to the issue of comp balance, where it's like, what happens if if you get RMP and the other team gets, uh, I, I don't know, I, don't, I can't think, I can't think of a. a it's like, a, what if they get a, RMP and I get fucking enhancement shaman Ellie shaman? It's bullshit. Yes. Well, yeah, you know what happens? What, what, what if what if you, I get lumberjack cleave? Uh, eventually the other healer gets those two shamans eventually yes. that enhancement shaman gets to match up with the rogue or maybe the mage or elemental yeah. shaman mage or yeah. and so and so it kind of takes that situation and, and nullifies it and, it and it works quite well because uh, i would say arena games are quite fast and i will say one thing that i don't see anyone talking about and i think it's incredibly valuable dude when you jump into this game it is a commitment for six rounds not one and that alone, having to get out of a game, once you go into one round on the live ladder, you lose, you win, you get out of the game, and then you have to re-queue. That timeline between getting into another game is fucking long. And how many games have you played right now where it just instantly queues you to the next game or puts you immediately into a practice range like an Overwatch and you just have that gameplay constantly? Gameplay engagement is the same as esports engagement. And I'll tell you what, when I'm looking at viewership numbers and we jump out of game and we're showing my face or anything that isn't gameplay... <laughs> our viewership goes down. (laughs) And so if you are getting me back into the game that quickly, I'm already stoked, man. So first of all, six games in a row, I I love that much arena. That was a really good condensed amount of of gameplay that I I enjoyed. And then I feel like I committed to it and I could go and take a break. You know what I mean? So so, so, so you actually participated in the uh, the PTR? I played uh, three hours past it. I awesome. was awesome. I was enthralled with solo shuffle. I I was even playing a healer too. I saw a lot of complaints as well as like Rester Druids are basically gods, and it's even more exaggerated in in this game mode. I will say that, uh, but uh, just because uh, so, attrition well, why, in why, longer games are important in this so, game. Okay, mode. so so why 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 is Resto particularly good in solo queue? Is there any reason for that? I, I would say um, as as a healer um, facing against another healer, if your team isn't aggressive or isn't capable of getting like those synergistic like goes, if you will. Right, you, you, you thrive from the breakdown of, of setups and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you, the right, setups sure, sure. of breakdowns then, really bring you to late game and they're, uh, 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 or get, b- win the game before late game. Rest of Druids thrive in late game. They have great mobility. Sure. Uh, they can go 
for cast. They, their mana management is fantastic. Yep. Uh, they're, they're just they're they're pretty uh, unforgiving or forgiving when it comes to bad positioning and repositioning and getting swapped to with bear form. I, I think that they're a good healer. That being said, I am having an absolute blast on Holy Priest. I have so many offensive options, and I can hmm. be super creative with mind games, whether it's on the Rest of Druid to make his hots hurt or if it's on the kill target because that mind game's fucking hurts. And mm -hmm. if it gets dispelled very quickly, I get my crit back with my with my yeah. second Lego. But, but it sets up Maledicts. It's bloody, bloody oh, crazy yeah, in mind yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maledict is fantastic. Too. It's so much fun. It's an aggressive healer. And then I have yeah. Flyy in the air and Holy Ward. Yeah. And dude, buttons for days. I'm having an absolute blast on that healer. And and also um, in the games itself, even when I feel like, you know, I might not get the luck of the draw. Uh, on certain things or on certain immediate comps, I always, if I do well enough, I'm always doing at least three or four wins out of the six. Mm -hmm. And that is a net bonus in the MMR system. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, but I did see, like, I played with Sid and I played with Venruki and I played every single time I got a pro player on my team. They won all six. Oh. They yeah, won all enough. six. Uh, a, a pro <laughs> DPS enough. player won all six. I didn't, yeah. I, I saw a couple of pro healer players and they didn't seem to be winning all six as much. I don't think yeah. that healers might be as impactful, but they were always a net positive. So I think that's mm. going to be, but healers also are going to get instant cues for days. No. I and, had a and we also know It felt great. We also know that in the, so we know there is an, there is an MMR system and in the context of the testing, you're going to end up with like the, you know, the, the rating system isn't really going to work to pair like-minded players. So in, so the, in reality, the, t the top end healers are going to get paired with the top end DPS and they will know how to, make things work whereas i imagine right, right now the, like the, the rank yes. one healers just can't can't carry the the game in the same way yeah um, yeah like i actually think game. i'd be way more impactful if like for example my warrior that i'm healing uh, yeah. had the situational awareness not to run run behind the fucking pillar you know what i mean like, precisely, precisely yeah, <laughs> yeah like so, so what once yeah. yeah one once the mmr like that, that's why you would essentially need an mmr for this and that's part of the, like, the issue with skirmishes la lacking uh, i believe we still don't, I still don't entirely know if skirms have an MMR or not. I believe they do not have an a MMR. hidden MMR or um, something I've heard, but yeah, yeah, at I, the same time, I've gotten some crazy people. In there. Does does Anixia breathe more? Who can say? Who can say? <laughs> hey, maybe there's an MMR, maybe there's not. Yeah, it's not that. It's not visible, so we can't know. It, it's, right? it, it's not. It's not impactful if there is one. Um, you, you yeah. end up seeing some weird stuff, and that's one of the big criticisms of skirms is that it lacks that that uh, authentic arena experience. It feels like a bit of a mess. So that's, that's kind of yeah. what people were pursuing with solo shuffle. Really, they, like, like what, what they wanted more than the ability to queue up solo, they wanted that, M that MMR. Yes, yes. And uh, when it comes to the solo shuffle, I'm curious to how, I'm imagining that this is going to come later. Uh, th uh, this was on the PTR for 9.2. So I'm imagining it's going to come at least after 9.2 or maybe even later. Um, but uh, when it does get released, I hope it comes with a visible MMR. Um, but if yeah, not, but I'm fucking addicted. I'm uh, going to play it nonstop. <laughs> as, as of testing, so I, I didn't actually uh, participate in the testing because I thought I wouldn't be up for it. It ended up being awake and then watched a couple of streams. I did see a MMR uh, counter there and, and an actual rating number there. It's like You, you yeah. caught that as well. Um, so I, my assumption, my working assumption is that there will be some form of, of rating or at the very least MMR attached to Solo yeah. Shuffle when it launches. And, I, and honestly, a lot of my criticisms for it last night were exactly that, where like, I feel like if I was grinding this as uh, all the games where I was playing with someone less than ideal, um, you know, and it got wrote, but they got rotated on both teams. Uh, I would tend as a healer to still be net positive, but maybe not yeah. the best, even though that I was you know, not tooting my own horn, but you know, full 1400 players, I might be a 2200 player. I didn't feel like I was getting a 2200 player worth of recognition of the results of that particular series, but I still was a net positive. And my cues were instant as a healer. And honestly, at the end of the day, I just want a cue. And no. I, I, I also learned a whole bunch about a, a variety of other uh, 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 classes that I generally didn't get the cue with before. Going back to your <laughs> point earlier with, uh, uh, with the, uh, the Zero to Hero Challenge, we're seeing a lot of these different players play on classes that we uh, in the AWC that didn't normally play those classes, like freaking Miss Weaver uh, on, on Chuck, Furiori on Absturge, whatever. Uh, I think solo queue is going to uh, gonna have a very similar amount of benefits for a lot of players, not just pro players, but – 
all types of players where they're going to be able to familiarize themselves with the different roles, which I personally believe, now this is a pretty large leap, but I personally believe the more you multiclass and the more familiar you get with other roles and other specializations and other uh, win conditions, the more empathetic you will be to your teammates. Uh, how many times did you go into a game and you lose a game and your team's like, oh, what the fuck? Why didn't you deter there in that cheap shot when you didn't have a trinket? And you're like, oh, guys, I didn't have a trinket. Why didn't you have a trinket? Because I trinketed earlier. And it's like this and that and this and that. There's a thousand yeah. different things that go on in the flow chart of a game, of any arena yeah. game. And to say that the pinpoint is any one particular uh, you know, decision, it, it usually can be a contributing factor, but it's not the end-all be-all. And I think that this puts that in a, in a much better yeah. light because it gives us more in-game time game knowledge is, is really important like knowing what the other team just did is really important and one of the things about covenants that has sort of been annoying is that it's thrown a spanner in the works of like what the hell just happened like you know bloody um why why is combust up when it is why is like what is this disease on me oh because necro priest is, is a big deal now <laughs> ah it's just a full-time job to know what the hell is happening in an arena game right now it is, it is, uh, and uh, it's not even my job anymore, and I'm still doing it. I'm just that obsessed <laughs> yep, with it. Man. Well, uh, yeah, just learning the new things. And then what What are Frost Mages now? They turn into Frankenstein and do way more yeah, damage? I don't know what uh, any of that means. De de uh, Deathborn, I think it is, and yeah, yeah. They, just, they start frost bolting for your entire health bar. And like, ah, Listen, so make sure to stay it, so. tuned to the dojo where we'll tell you about things that we don't know about that's happening. <laughs> but we'll tell yep. you that it's, ha it's changing. Yep. Hey, heads up. Frost mages, when they're free casting, do a lot of damage. Just yeah. make sure they just, never get a setup and never get a polymorph, yeah, just, and you win. You're good. Yeah, setup just, 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 just kick Frost Bolt. Don't worry about when and how. Just just kick Frost Bolt, and you'll probably live. It's I played with Venriki's Frost Mage, and I, he's insane. He does the most damage yeah. I've ever seen ever. His positioning is really good, yada, yada, yada. But uh, he doesn't have Deep Freeze anymore, and that's he can't <laughs> carry the game by himself. He needs by Chastise. And listen, I Chastise good. poorly, so we still lose <laughs> a lot. Solo shuffle, man. I can't talk more, talk better about it. I'm really excited for it. Maybe it's just pure ass copium, but it felt like a lot of fun. I watched Van Ricky play. It looked like a lot of fun for him. Super Tease immediately logged out after I played with him because he won 6 0, 6 0, 6 0 in the row. And he's like, Boomskin's going to get nerfed. I have to leave. I'm like, dude, give me a break. Okay, goodbye, <laughs> Super Tease. Yep. Um, I think I think it's going to be a friggin' hit. So uh, I'm going to be promoting the living shit out of this feature because I really want it to become not just a brawl, not just like a monthly thing. I want it to be a game feature that gets titles yeah. and rewards because I think it has so a I, lot of potential. I, I don't know what the current status of solo shuffle is going to be. If it's going to be a like a like it's, if it's going to be in the rotation with comp stomp or if it's going to well, be a like, like an solo extra shuffle. Button. I assume brawl. You know yeah, I mean? so so I believe on the PTR it was a, it was a fourth or an, an additional option on the list beneath the brawl, but that could have been oh. a temporary thing on the PTR. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm not the one to I'm not going to make any assumptions. Uh, what what we do know is this is almost certainly them just like dipping their toes in the water and, and getting the tech set up if they do want to expand on the uh, on the technology going forward. The um, PTR was popping. It was very 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 active. Probably like just as active mm -hmm. as I was imagine like when the Shadowlands beta first came out. It was super, no. super, super duper popping. Um, so popping that like the devs were like posting pictures of like Orbos. Oh, I think Venri or not Venri, uh, Halinka actually posted some GIF about PTR right now because it was it was really <laughs> popular. Uh, I loved it. I, I can't wait till they do it again. In the interim, I'm just going to be trying to push on my on my holy priest. But uh, yeah. when that ever comes out, I, I just plan to stream that nonstop. Um, cool. So. Uh, we're going on a little bit late here, so I'm going to go to the next topic, which uh, is the Oasis tournament. Uh, can I give this to you to pitch? Can you can you uh, talk about this a little bit? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, I, I'm I, 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 I'm a I'm a uh, work for hire that just happens to not get paid. I have no idea what's going on with Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> so Oasis is hosting some PvP tournaments. They've already had uh, one on the 25th, but tomorrow they have a 3v3 arena tournament at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and here, I'm going to give you guys a link to the, the latest tweet. It'll also be in the information below on if you're listening to this on uh, podcasts uh audio only make sure to go to the oasis twitter channel and support that event so i'm excited so I, for I, that. yeah so it's going to be that to my understanding their first uh 3v3 set team uh set tournament, teams that's um, huge which i'm very curious to see how it goes because obviously there's going to be a, 
a a gulf between like the the, the best team potentially and the worst team. So we'll, we'll see how how balance plays out. Um, I'm very excited to see how it goes because ultimately, like this is kind of this is where Oasis probably wants to be in the long term is looking at these these three v three set team tournaments. This is kind of like the 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 bread and butter of uh, of any uh, tournament uh, scene. So hopefully it uh, goes really well for them. I'm very excited. I'll, obviously, I'll be there um, casting. I believe I'll be. It'll be just me and Bondor. You won't be there. I, I understand. Yeah, uh, uh, dude, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, no. So, so, you, so you, you might be, might not. I might be. I might not. I'll, okay. I know okay. that I'm at least making the graphics package. Right. Sure, fair enough. Fair okay. Enough. Uh, but I'm fucking stoked because yeah. everything that Oasis does is very meticulous um, mm-hmm. and, and very yeah. thoughtful. Like Cherry's like, yeah, I need to do 16 tournament practice tournaments so I know how to tournament admin correctly. She's just she's just really good at what she do she does and she really cares about making a good product. Yeah. And so this is this is Oasis dipping their toes into some high end yeah. competitive the, formats, and I'm here the, for it. The, the the backstage stuff like the, the the management of the last tournament we did the, uh, the charity event that she she was terrific cherry like like as someone so, who'd never done anything before I, I felt in very safe hands I knew what was going on I never never felt hung out to dry there was no panic attacks on air it was it was perfect um, so yeah so, so so tune into that to maybe see David who knows uh, otherwise it'll be me and Barn um, I'd love to do in, it uh, but you know I'm not she's the boss <laughs> you, 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 you're you're a busy man. Yeah, no, I, I'm not busy tomorrow, but but she's <laughs> she's she's the boss, and okay. at the end of the day, what Cherry says goes. And I hope all Fair that enough. are listening, please make sure she she genuinely is a good leader. Um, when it came hmm. to when I got hired at GCD or when I got hired at Blizzard, I remember going to my very first PvP sync, and like some of the devs were like, "Dude, we love to have you here, but we also really are bummed because GCD is not doing their tournaments anymore." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, no, it's super valid." And so my whole time that I was there, I was looking for someone to kind of take those reins and there's been so many people who've kind of shown the po- poke their head out and show their interest cherry being one of them but uh she she's got a really good head on her shoulders i think that she has yeah. way more potential than even i did and, at making events so yeah and Keep an uh, oasis is also just a it's it's values like as a community are uh are great like it's it's focused as we discussed is on like activating those those new players creating a space where new players feel welcome to come in and and like you know network with each other make mistakes and so on it's not it's not as uh as vile as the uh the wasteland of lfg uh yeah no they're they're human beings that's what i like to say like I think that uh, it, you know we're we're so close to World of Warcraft that we don't know uh, we don't know how to advocate for like the behaviors that's going on in the real world. Sure. But when I go more out into the real real world, they're dealing with the very same community issues we are, uh, and just about any community you can think of uh, 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 with the same scale. To be completely, mm-hmm. completely candid, uh, you get that many people together, and you're just you're you're not going to have a hundred percent good eggs or a hundred percent consciously good eggs. There's a lot of uh, unconscious malice, uh, but but Oasis uh, is establishing the the foundation for how to be a good human being, and then uh, <laughs> that that's a good foundation to then add on any community you want. Because the reality is, it's like whatever the fuck your shtick is, whether it's a video game, you want to build cars, whatever tribe that you want to, you know, subscribe to, uh, you want to make sure that that tribe that you're subscribing to is a safe place. And uh, mm-hmm. Oasis prides itself on exactly that. Uh, and in a world like this, uh, I mean, I, I don't think that can be valued uh, any higher. And but also it is it's a beacon for other people who maybe are irritating or maybe are malicious to to go after yeah. them. And so they're, they're they are dealing with nonsense a, a lot. I will give them that. But they're, they're doing a lot of really good. And, and personally, it's brought a lot of motivation for me to come back to the game because I have like minded folks that I know uh, will just give me an environment where I can relax have you ever been like, sure. oh, I'm done with my work day. I'm going to go play some arena. And they're like, yeah, make sure to get into comms. And it's like some guy you've never met before who's mm. super duper try hard. Uh, this is like your fourth yeah. alt. And you're like, dude, I, or 1800. Like, it's okay. That, that was that was what really killed the rating for me. It was Subtribe like, too, nice. The, 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 like the, my experience with that was like most, uh, 
most pure with the rating where like I'll, I'd be pursuing like, you know, it'd be results oriented. So you join the best guild based on performance and like, you know, to be the, to get the highest, whatever. And you, you'd get home from a, a long day at uni, like, you know, a two hour commute and the guy's just a fuck with. And it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's a, dude. Oh my God. There was this one DK I used to play with who was like, and I, I didn't delete him. I should have deleted him on my friends. List. Every day he would whisper to me. He's like, hey, come on, let's play. And he'd have like the, the most gnarly Southern drawl. Don't get me wrong. I like a good Southern drawl. Uh, but this guy, Southern Drawl, I couldn't understand what he was saying, and he was aggressive. <laughs> and he was just yeah. like a one-handed, two, like a dual-wielding one-handed Frost DK just screaming in the microphone <laughs> behind pillars. <laughs> it was just the worst experience ever. And and, I, I, and, and like, I'm like, I, oh, why am I not having fun in this game anymore? This is so weird. I, I, I'm imagining like the, the his, audio right is now. <laughs> his, his audio is distorted because he's behind a pillar. Like it's, like it's in the distance. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yes, exactly. He's, 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 he's trying to solo the healer and RMP, and you're getting bloody spam poly And oh my god, I can picture it right now, dude. Exactly. And so when I found people, like I started RBGing with Oasis and just getting in in the comms with them, I just felt like I can relax. Have you ever have you ever just been around certain people where where you can just to take a deep breath and not worry about being judged? Well, that's this type of place. So if you, if that's something that you're interested in, maybe you don't want to get in Discord with a bunch of people for RBGs, but you're looking for just a couple of two v two partners or just people to just to link different TikToks to, or whatever the fuck you're into, uh, go and head on over to the Oasis Discord and just hang out. No pressure. Uh, but Absolutely. I highly recommend it. And it's not just a bunch of 1,800 players. Freaking Cherry just got her glad, man. Uh, the people that are playing at O2 as well, I think like a lot of like these like open-minded communities always get like the bad rep of like, oh, they're not community. Yeah. Competitive, the though. They have yeah. literally AWC players in there, so that's not an excuse yeah. either. Cool. We love you, cool. Oasis. Kisses. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to tell you how to run your podcast, David, but we've got a lot to cover still in the next, you know, no, 15, no, 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 no. It's a it, oh, I guess we have Comstop to cover. Uh, this we, this we is do. old. I, There's some old stuff. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't I, worry. I, I I've done so much Comstop this week. Did you? I, I can't yes, bring I, myself to queue I, it ever again. Ever. I can't. I refuse. Why? Why is that? Why don't you want to do Comstop? Because listen, I get, they give you honor in arena. Don't so. don't don't you get don't you get violent FOMO knowing how much because like the, like the honor grind is so is so substantial right now like just the the ease of access i don't even have the rating to upgrade my gear so i you know what i mean like what am i gonna get like the 15 cap and then i'm gonna go and then i start pushing the i actually do have the rating i have 2100 i have literally no excuse you got me (laughs) yesterday oh um why you gotta call me out on my podcast like this man that's fucked up i i I do i do want to say i have a i I have a strange relationship with with those robots in comstom because uh, I know that they're they are they're NPCs like any other mob in World of Warcraft, but they're coded as people. So I pity them. Yes, because I yes. because I I, cause I don't know what it's like to be uh to be a, a random guard in in uh Sanctum of Domination, but I do know what it's like to get five capped in Arathi Basin, and their existence is solely to get five capped in Arathi Basin. So I so I, I pity them. I, it's very strange. I, I I view them as another solution or another necessary sacrifice. Uh, just like uh, the uh, the boxes that are shipped to our alts, it's not a fix. It, no, it's not. But well, but, but the, it's okay. It's okay. Because Compstomp has been around for half a decade now, but it has only like just recently become notable with the the need to farm honor. Like when it was released in Legion, it was like this weird like, oh, that's a cool, that's a cute bit. And now <laughs> it's like, oh, like this is this is the this is the chance to get the uh, honor. Yeah. Take uh, take advantage. Farm farm these idiot robots. Yeah, in case you guys didn't know, Comstop also gives you a pretty decent chance on drop of renown. So if you yes. need to farm your renown up, like you're at like 40 renown mm-hmm. on that alt character, and you want to get your renown up, you want to get that honor, and you got all that conquest gear to upgrade, and maybe you're like, what, 1800 from that conquest gear, and you want to upgrade everything, this is the perfect place to go and just start. Yeah. Uh, Comstop was around since Legion? I don't yes. know. Yeah, that, that, that's, what, yes that's, that's what I was saying. But that's the thing. So when it came out, there was no incentive to do it. It was just like this weird thing. What it, what it was, I presume, was a prototype of the tech used the AI. for... Um, islands. Yeah, yes, yeah. For, for islands. Yeah, so, so they, they built the tech. It was working. Hey, let's throw it in Arathi Basin and have a fun time. That makes um, sense. So that, that, so, so that came out as a brawl. And now... Five years later, it's it's must watch bloody much must, must play uh, content. Yeah, and that's and that's how you do it. You you bribe people to do it. Like like RBGs were dead in BFA, and then 
bloody so, Blizzard put a bunch of put enough rewards in, and people start doing IBDs again. People yeah, start doing comp stop. I really bribe I, people. I really bribe hope them. that they're not looking at the numbers for comp stop and they're like, "This is an engaging piece of content," because everyone's doing no. it. There's no, no way. I they mean, are. no, they. The, I I know like the, like people give the the designers a bad rap. They they're professional Definitely. game designers. They know what yeah. they, they know what they're doing. They, they know what they've done. They know that they've bribed people to. They, to do they've this helped thing us. They wouldn't otherwise do. The, that was that was a that was a emergency drop of like listen we're here you guys we can't change the whole game right now. <laughs> emergency yeah. drop here's calm stop just murder yeah. these robots. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 biggest challenge with comp stomp is that people are, are so used to being trivial that like uh it's it's quite common to hear about people losing because like actually losing to the robots because just everyone's afk because it's like yeah, because everyone's free free yeah. garbage so it's like i've not had a full like i've not had a a disastrous loss to the robots due to afk but i have had like what should have been an easy five cap turn into a grueling four cap because the yeah. difference between four and five cap is like twice the the length yeah um because you know like, you know like all, all but four people are fast. afk yeah yeah Anyway, move on. Comp stomp. Go fight robots if you need conquest. That's uh, sorry, the last need topic, honor. man. That's no, no the... it's not. The new Blizzard IP, we've got the... the oh, I this mean, is you, old. You, it's, it's, sorry. That's who, old. Who, that's who, old. Don't look at that. I, don't look at who that. Who am I to tell you how to run, run your podcast? Okay, listen. Who am I to tell you how to run your survival game, I didn't want to talk about because it was literally a blog post about how there's a survival game. And that's it. <laughs> Well, I I wanted to talk about it simply because talk, talk um, about it, man. Please. Well, so so as so as as we know, as you just said, there's very little substance to the announcement. But what I do think is interesting is that they announced it in this way at all, um, mm, because yeah, as as true. you know, you you don't need to announce projects in this way to hire for an unannounced uh, project. Like you, you yourself right now are working on an right. unannounced project. You you did not need a piece of concept art uh, publicly posted to uh, to be hired for that that gig. So uh, we we know very little about it. We know it's still probably going to be years away. But this to me seems like a uh, a PR move on behalf of Blizzard to it's like you know, in the midst of what, everything they're dealing with right now. It's a thing oh, of like, hey, yeah. here's 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 something new. Here's here's like you know we have nothing to say about it, but here's here's a concept art and new IP and a bit of buzz. Because yeah, like I, at the end of the day, there was no reason to announce what they did beyond uh, uh, public perception, like a broad public thing. It did seem peculiar. Announce- it seemed really it, peculiar it, yes. that, like, because last time they announced, like, a brand new look into an IP, it was Overwatch. And yes, it was at and, that and BlizzCon, and they no, took yep. over, like, yes, every media outlet for, like, a that, month. That, that's and all they had is a trailer. They, oh, no. no oh, no, they, they, had a tra- they, they had a demo. They had a demo. They, yeah. No, they, they, had a, they had a perfect launch for... Um, for Overwatch because they they had the full CD trailer, they had a gameplay trailer, and then at the end they were like, "By the way, it's playable on uh, on uh, the floor." So Beautiful. that's that's the ideal announcement for, for this sort of thing. So the fact that they've they've pivoted so far from so that, so you like, already are thinking about why they're doing that, and you're already dismissing that it's for recruiting. Yes, no, that they they had no reason mm-hmm. to do what they did because because if you go look at the at the Blizzard job postings at any given time, there's, they've got a whole bunch of unannounced stuff, like uh, un, untitled, unannounced project. They, they did not need to post a piece of concept art to get people to want to go develop for them. They didn't need to make that public. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, I, so I just, why I did they do it? Oh, so you think that they're just trying to get attention away from the unionization from stuff. and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it's it's just it's just a it's a it's a piece of of positive uh, news in the midst of, of acquisitions of and Bobby Kodak and not recognizing unions and so on and so forth. It's well, it's I, uh, speaking of unions, I do want to just not uh, do a quick nod to the uh, the ABK folks, a better ABK folks. I know there's a lot of nonsense that's going on over there, and there's a lot of back and forth. But just the fact that there's people trying to organize, yeah. the fact that there's people trying to unionize. Good. You, you, you want to acknowledge the the Raven uh, Union, which is more than Blizzard themselves have done. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's peculiar. It's peculiar. It really is. And and the criticisms that they're they're sending their way are incredibly valid. Uh, yeah. So not acknowledging them, sure. I understand the tactics from a business sense. If you really are subscribed to the full fledged capitalism, is good. Um, but. Uh, from the other sense of just like morals like i hate when these legal and these business decisions force us to do the not moral right thing which is acknowledge that people had fucking shitty situations i feel like not acknowledging these situations is inadvertently like kind of a slap in the face to a lot of people's situation and uh, I, I'm absolutely not, and can, not a fan, not a fan. And, and considering uh, how much people over the years have sacrificed to work at blizzard because blizzard for for you know 
decade, two decades was like you know the, the company you you live in a shoebox to uh, to work at. Like people would would do all sorts of absurd things to get for that opportunity to work at Blizzard. And the fact that you know it's it's not only now have the have the conditions at the coal face been so exposed, but also that Blizzard is is digging their heels in and, and sort of like t- like showing their hand as the yeah. the monstrous union busting. Uh, I don't even uh, know capitalist. It, and this is the shittiest part because. And it is nothing. I'm not. I'm not calling you out on this at all. But no, 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 no. When you said Blizzard, um, it's true. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 you have to separate between the corporate and the actual people on the ground. Because and sorry, I want to yeah, do that more. I want to do that more. Yes. And the, and the reason why is because uh, the the communication that we're having it, uh, that d- determining who is really important because obviously Holinka and these people who are working on PVP and these people who are working on the assets in the game have nothing to do with the decisions yes. and the criticism Sorry. that we're talking about. You're, but you're sorry. there is criticism sorry. to be had. Yeah. Yes, I, what happened there is I, I overcorrected because over the past few years, I've started following uh, developers on Twitter and like like getting to know names and associate names with certain systems. And I've, I feel like I'm almost too forgiving to Blizzard in general because I when I look at a, at a bad system, I think, oh, this... This isn't the. This isn't a faceless corporation's decision. This was Jeff's decision. This guy did this, and I like Jeff, so I will forgive him for this. Uh, this decision, <laughs> and, and, and I and I worry that I, I cut Jeff too much slack, and in doing so, cause yeah, Blizzard stuff to, to, to get away with too much. So I, yeah. I in that moment, I, I tried to like overcorrect a little bit and be like, yeah, fuck Blizzard. The problem, but the thing is, at the end of the day, is that they are uh, like. The the, repre- the people who are representing Blizzard are the spokespeople are the ones who are yes. saying the who are saying these decisions. There's people who are literally just uh, public yes. figures. And, and to, yes. to, to your and point, technically PvP and to your your question, doesn't Raven need to acknowledge the union? Well, uh, as a third party, so this is the this is the problem is that uh, they're asking for a volunteer uh, a- a- acknowledgement, which means that they have their own set of well, what how it started is they had their own set of problems that they would complain about, and then if nothing is done. Uh, unionization and the, and the organization of unionization is the last ditch effort of many years of uh, nail, uh, punching their head against a wall over and over and over again, saying that this is the correct way to go about doing this and nothing getting done. The reality the, is, is that there needs to be more leverage in the conversation or they're going to continue to gaslight everyone. Yeah. What, what's, what's worth remembering is that uh, game games have yet to have their big uh, unionization effort that we've seen in like in TV and movies. Like these these big uh, creative it needs to be industries. A large, a yeah. large the, the, organization. These, yes. The, these big cre- creative industries have had their unionization moments, their workers' rights moments, but games still haven't had that. So you've got a lot of of young, uh, excitable people who are willing to to move to California to live in, in in a shoebox to work at these big companies, and they are ultimately being taken advantage of. Um, and so there, this this is a industry wide issue that needs to be resolved on an industry level. So whilst uh, Blizzard isn't like like so, like Blizzard themselves won't solve this issue but they are one of the biggest players out there so like you know if blizzard acknowledges the union and if, union, and if unionization works at blizzard then ubisoft and ea and, and bungie all these other uh, corporations start to fall into line as well yeah but it it's, it's it, just it is, leverage. It is a long time coming it's a long time coming you'll see a lot of people talk good about union bad about union and the way that i think about unions is it's it's more it's nothing more than a tool to provide power to a different uh uh, demographic of people within the same organization. And so Absolutely. if you're running into the same problems with the same leadership for the last 15 years, and you've acknowledged that the people who founded a lot of the, the leadership and a lot of the, the practices and uh, um, was straight up an abuser, which we have multiple examples of, uh, I think it's safe to assume that there's going to be a lot of cultural and just things that are embedded within to the systems and, and the processes and the culture of, of that community that it's going to have consequence, long-term consequences. And so uh, to constantly get let go, like these big layoff let goes and these Absolutely. philosophical decisions when it comes to game design and the guidelines that they're kind of putting around the developers and the priorities that they're putting around the developers. I think it's pretty obvious that there's some shortcomings and some valid criticisms. And the fact of the matter is there is no open dialogue. There's players complaining. There's uh, community teams that can't say anything in return. And then there's people profiting and all of the communities complaining and not feeling validated. If we want to change that, we need to be able to have someone listen to them. And right now we don't. I, I know it's quite tempting to correlate the quality of the game to the state of the uh, of the worker, but I, I, I worry about f- 
falling like too deep into that because that, even if Warcraft was the best it's ever been, if it was in the perfect state, that still wouldn't be a uh, reason to dismiss the the cries of the work. I know, I know that's oh, what, yeah, you, not what you're suggesting, but I, but just like yeah, yeah like, if if the game was good, I know plenty of. of I think what I'm trying to correlate yeah. is yep, yep. the same criticisms that we have for the game. I would put that timeline of, I mean, we talk about how the further back you go, the better it gets, or uh, at certain points, or like in Wrath and Cataclysm, um, but then also look at the influence of those who are going to advocate for profitability. Um, you can genuinely see the philosophical difference, and you can correlate those th two things very closely. I think yeah. that when it comes to game design and philosophy, uh, it, 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 it's very similar to the same conversation that we had in the very beginning of this uh, podcast choice, which is talking about the difference between people who make content to get more eyes on it and to, for growth and people who are making just something good. Um, and w for example, the quality that you put forth is something that I genuinely do enjoy. Maybe I don't enjoy the supercuts, but the supercuts are going to work with the algorithm. At the end of the day, that all the data that's going to tell people that it's going to get more profitability might not be the best way to make the best product. And so you need to have dialogue. You need to have more attributes that maybe are a little bit more, more nebulous and not as black and white as metrics. Because if you're looking at just metrics, then all of a sudden islands in Comstop are some of the most successful game features in your game. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. There you go. That's my hot take. And, you know, I'm sure I'm wrong in a lot of this. I don't have the perspective of someone who has to make the game and deal with the uh, philosophical guidelines. I'm not sure how those guidelines go in. But from a high level, there, there's a correlation. And, and I think everyone's kind of acknowledged that over time, that, like, it, it, as profitability becomes more important and the, the store becomes more prevalent, it, uh, the things that keep us uh, running on our treadmills are also becoming way more prevalent. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, um, but I'm not trying to say that the end all be all is worse. I'm saying I'm in it for in this game for the long haul and I want to have an open dialogue to make sure that it's the best it can be. And I think that open dialogue is the key, uh, to p match with the data to get us in the right direction. I don't think data alone is going to get us there. And it's, 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 it's rough. I think unionization is going to give uh, us the ability to have more of a voice on the highest level of things. I mean, I, I worked at a high, as a pretty high level position. I didn't get to talk mm. to any of those executives ever. Yeah. Yeah. Let because all, the, so, these, yeah. Because these, big, these big companies are, are layered. Yeah. I, yeah. it's just, uh, if there's a, if there's a supporting, structure that is kind of uh, democratically voted in that holds that same amount of leverage, you're going to have a lot more opportunities to have, uh, uh, you know, conversations with them. You're going to have a lot more um, uh, ability to connect with them than uh, what's deliberately is not being able to connect with any of the people now. Uh, yes. But here, I'm going to get off this topic. As you can imagine, I'm really passionate about it. Um, no, and it's absolutely. It's... It, it's I'd, just, rather, I'd rather don't be want... passionate about worker rights in the other direction. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's also, it's like but a... I also want to be cognizant of like the the people who are you know still knee deep in the middle of that. And at the end of the day, yeah. this is strategically, from my perspective, what's what's best for worker rights. Uh, but a, it's the livelihood, it's the reality that a lot of people are still a, in now. A lot, a lot of effort is spent trying to get us to to separate like. Uh, uh, products from the labor that created them. So, re so resisting that effort um, a a across across the uh, uh, you know your 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 day is is really important. Like you know, like ask ask where your lamp came from. Ask where your your produce came from. Ask where like you know the who, who's making your video game, who's making your entertainment. Um, and generally, you'll you'll learn interesting things about the world doing that. Yep. Oh, my favorite thing was uh, this learning about where all my favorite artists came from. Can, was... can we go back to talking about uh, yeah 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 let's go let's go with the world let's... <laughs> listen choice i appreciate you man but oh, actually th we're gonna end the podcast on that that we're gonna, that's we're gonna that's good that. well I, that's how much uh significance i want to add to that last tip bit and i really appreciate you coming in. no technically thank you for bringing it up because it is something that uh is really important to me 
uh, the unionization of everything. It's something that I really support when it comes to who should be in charge of the union. It should be an open dialogue. It should be an open conversation, uh, who we elect to, 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 to run that. But I think that we should all at least have the conversation that we need the tools to be able to better uh, delegate and, and, and force those at the, the, at the highest level to listen at the very least. And, and, and they've proven over 10 years that they didn't. And I think that that's more than fair. Um, yeah. Well, with that being said, I love each and every one of you for coming and tuning in. Thank you so much, uh, Miss McGee, for the subscription. I miss your face dearly. Uh, I hope that you're doing great over there. And uh, I will see you guys next time, next Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific here at twitch.tv slash dmachine52 or at youtube.com slash dmachine52. Um, if you're watching this uh, post-produced and not live. That being said, we will be going on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, I think it's called, and then Apple Music slash Podcasts. Um, so we got to get that RSS feed up and on episode five. So not the next episode, but the episode after, those will all be set up and you'll be able to uh, listen to our beautiful voices as you, I don't know, what do, what do normal people do when they listen to pod- When you go on your morning run? God, if you're listening to us on your morning run right now, Seriously, give, give yourself the, a pat on the back. That's incredible. The, the happiest uh, mornings of my life was uh, right before the pandemic. I was going for early morning walks. I would listen to old episodes, like like decade old episodes of the Instance Podcast. Yeah, uh, Scott, Scott Scott Johnson. So, so it was the <laughs> weirdest thing. I'll, I'll, I would re-listen to podcast episodes I heard ten years earlier, and it was just it was just nice to hear people excited about Draenei being introduced and like, oh, I just checked out Hellfire Ramparts. It's amazing. Hearing someone that talk was... passionately about fucking anything gets me going, man. <laughs> No. gets me fucking uh, going it was, it was it was a different time but uh if but uh, keep keep running even after this podcast ends if, if you are listening to us right now don't don't let up keep at it yeah we're we're cheering you on let us know yeah. what your what your mileage is in the comments below but make sure to follow choice on the twitters and on the youtubes please his content is yeah, so super I've, duper underrated I've, he needs more I've viewers fun. it's absurd I've, I finally aligned my uh, my handles, so choice underscore au will get you the the Twitch and the Twitter. Um, also, the uh, the YouTube should uh, should be in the info that. below. We'll be in the info below. I got you hooked. It'll up, be, it will be in the info. Right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you. And uh, yeah. Ch- Clutter's got us hooked up on the Twitch chat. I'll go to hooked up in the description on YouTube. And uh, we're going to end the podcast there. Thank you again, sir, for joining me. I want to do this pleasure. again. Listen, I said that you should be a regular, and, I, and I'm doubling down on that now. You, you were <laughs> fucking great, man. Uh, Thanks so much. You, we'll you we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something we'll out. We'll talk. Make sure to watch Oasis okay. tomorrow, and I appreciate y'all tuning in. Yes. Thank you. No, no, there'll, be more, there'll be more of me tomorrow, so look out for that. Look out for that. All right. That's it. Take care.